So greetings from LA, my dear, dear friends. This is Daisuke, and we are once again joined by our dear friend Tanner from The Horrible Show. Say hello, Tanner. Hey, how you doing? Greetings from uh, Richmond, Virginia. How's everything in Virginia? It's good, man. It's good. It's actually, uh, it's kind of chill and rainy. It's a, It was a great day to sit and uh, watch some scary movies. Ah, and so now we cut right to the chase because mm-hmm. uh, like before, you were very kind enough to share with us your thoughts about uh, the f- Halloween films. And yeah. so we've been talking back and forth, you and I, and we wanted to try to do the same thing, but this time focusing on the Nightmare on Elm Street films. Yeah. So uh, today I, what I propose is that we can talk about the films very quickly or just talk about our feelings about the series and then jump right into our favorites. So so ranking our favorites, you and I, uh, from, I guess, the, 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 you know, from the bottom of the list or number, whatever it is, all the way down to number one, our favorite. So much yeah. like our Halloween discussion, we'll do this for the Nightmare on Elm Street films. So uh, just before we continue, I should point out that you and I discussed this and we will be focusing on... on the feature films and so no freddy's nightmares unfortunately yeah uh you know it's something that i'd love to be able to talk about but it's it's uh, that is it a beast in you know all yes a well done it's a beast in and of itself the the terrain that is freddy's nightmares so um uh so but that i think is a fascinating series but we thought let's focus on the feature films and that means too i know freddy might appear you know, the glah ha, 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 in some other, say, you know, <laughs> films like that. But we're focusing yeah, yeah. primarily on 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 the feature films. So that means we're going to be including not just, you know, one through six in the new nightmare, but also Freddy versus Jason and yeah. also, uh, yes, the remake. So uh, that is our pool of films to, to pull from. Uh, and so uh, we're going to rank them according to our own personal preferences and favorites. And see, we'll see where our lists uh, are the same and where they're different. So I'm looking forward to this yeah. very much. Yeah, me too. I'm looking forward to see what your what your list. There was there was about three in the middle. I'm not trying to spoil any of the list that were so hard for me <laughs> to to rank. So I'd like to see kind of where where your head was at too. So it's wow. gonna be very interesting. And thank I'm, you guys so much for having me on the channel again. I feel you know I really appreciate it. No, not at all. Not at all. It's, uh, the, the pleasure and, and privilege is all mine. So thank you so much uh, for taking the time today. But uh, let's just go right into it. So before we get into our list, I should uh, let me just ask you very briefly, um, what is your history and your experiences with the Nightmare films? When did you first see them? What were your impressions? How do you feel about them? Just share with us a little bit about your, your take on the Nightmare series overall. Man, like the more and more I think about it, I think it was like the gateway into everything horror for me. I think Freddy Krueger, for a lot of people, is just that the iconic, when you think horror, you think Freddy Krueger. And you think, when you think sequels too, you think Freddy Krueger, because there are some sequels that are just as strong, I feel, as the original. Um, And man, I know, I feel like I've been bugging you kind of all week. But I've been going through like the the YouTube promos, and it was it was bringing back nostalgia. When this the Nightmare on Elm Street box set DVD box set came out in like '99, that was like so. I was born in '91, and I remember my dad buying that for me for my birthday, and I think it was either '99 or 2000. And bro, it was like like entry door into horror. It was it was great. Like, I remember I got friends because they had an interest in Freddy Krueger, too. I remember, like, swapping. They had the Friday the 13th set. I had the Nightmare on Elm Street, you know, swapping DVDs and stuff like that. So I, I got some some hardcore nostalgia with the series, man. So you say you were born in 91. So that would be around the time that Freddy's Dead, A Final Nightmare, was released. That's interesting. Yeah. So... What what were do your what were your earliest memories uh, of watching the films and what films do you remember seeing first in the series? Do you remember? I remember seeing. I think we had a kind of like a bootleg copy of the original, like maybe like third generation copy of a tape. 
and I also remember they used to show uh, part two on TV. I remember I had Halloween two and then uh, Nightmare Part two taped off of like AMC or something with the commercials and all that. I just remember burning out that VHS tape too. So, you know, it wasn't, it was quite a while, not until I got the box set that I saw the rest of the sequels. Oh, very cool. And then of course, after that came, uh, I guess, yeah, uh, you know, Wes Craven's new nightmare. And then uh, a few years later, of course, Freddy versus Jason after a long sort of gestation yeah. period. Which was a uh, big deal, man. Yeah. It was, you know. Yeah. <laughs> it was huge, huge. Yeah. And uh, I'm sure we'll talk a little bit about that as well. The buzz and excitement in yeah. going to the theater. You know, I went to, I remember going to the theater watching Freddy versus Jason. It was, it was amazing. Too. Yeah, and then of course after that there's a there's a remake, but uh, uh, we, yeah, we'll talk about that I'm sure as well. But um, but uh, yeah, it's it's yeah. Please, no. What uh, I would love to know your your experience with the series, man. How oh you... oh, yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. I, I was born uh, much earlier than you. I was born in 1979, so I, I was growing up. I was in the 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 VHS era period, you know, the eighties when uh, nightmare on Elm street and nightmare on Elm street part two uh, were made available through VHS rentals. So I never saw those in the theater because of course I was, I would have been too young to go, but I just remember them being in the air. Like I remember a period in my life where I, I only knew the first two films yeah. and nightmare on Elm street part three, uh, dream warriors uh, was not yet made available. And so that, that still feels like a kind of fresh new film for me because I just remember the period where it was just Nightmare on Elm Street and Nightmare on Elm Street Part Two: Freddy's Revenge. So, uh, so and I watched those over and over again. Yeah, man. Uh, kind of ad nauseum. Just watched them repeat. It was amazing. It was an amazing experience. Um, and a lot of things I I kind of get. And even as a kid watching those, I didn't get at the time. And and I just remember just traveling through the eighties. When Nightmare 3 came out, it was a big deal. And then Nightmare, I remember Nightmare on Elm Street Part 4, that was a huge deal when it came out. And then Freddy's Nightmares, you wanted to, I wanted to figure out how we could watch Freddy's Nightmares. It's just almost just on the point of a kind of, of uh, fascination, just wanting to know more about this, this world. And then Nightmare on Elm Street uh, Part 5, Dream Child, the buildup to that film was intense. And this whole thing about you know reading Fangoria magazine and seeing yeah. the Freddy makeup for Nightmare Five and how it differed yeah. from you know the earlier and that is trying to be more in line with the first film and that was a big deal and then watching the film and being like okay this is interesting and then the same build up was happening for Freddy's Dead the Final Nightmare and I'd get Fangoria magazines and I try to you know cut out a newspaper uh, clippings and put put them in a little so notebook awesome. and things I was just yeah. that was amazing uh, so. Uh, and so it's just, it, it was part of my 80s life, I think, uh, film yeah. life. So uh, just, uh, it, I think it left a very indelible impression upon me. Uh, and so even now I, I revisit them and I, I have so many feelings about them. So yeah, I love the films very much. Yeah. I think they're so fascinating. Yeah. yeah, And it just goes to show for the series too, like um, the different, the, the zeitgeist throughout the years, like how it used to be like, it can from 84 to today. It's still, I know a lot of people still love the series, man. So yeah, I got to give it up to them for that. Definitely. Definitely. I mean, it, it has a certain type of, of uh, uh, longevity, I think, yeah. which is uh, uh, fascinating. And, you know, we're of course always eagerly waiting what will be released in terms of physical media, et cetera. I mean, it's a kind of interesting um, how other horror series have fared in the physical media realm, but relatively speaking, we still have sort of the older, you have the DVD set or the later, you know, slimmer down version of the Blu-ray. Yep, 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 yep. me too, me too. Um, but, uh, you know, we'll see what happens with that. And also, also too, uh, kind of the, uh, uh, the uh, uh, any Freddy's Nightmares releases and the like. So I know, like a legit one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's a, that's yeah. always a uh, what's going to happen. But uh, yeah, that that I think is a it, it's a, a as I mentioned before, I think that's a whole fascinating uh, realm of uh, discussion points all of, all of its own. But let us then just jump or dive right into it. You know, in true uh, Nightmare Five Yvonne fashion, let's oh. dive right into this. And uh, let's let's go for uh, uh, our listing ranking. So let's let's just uh, be before we begin again. Uh, we will 
mention, I think it's fair game to mention any plot points, any spoilers, any ending points, because that's part of the discussion. So uh, uh, yeah. before we go on, if you are wary, my dear friends, anyone who's watching, if you don't want to be spoiled by this, I would suggest maybe uh, you can uh, turn off right now, but then come back at any time uh, uh, if you're interested, because we're going to be... Uh, we're going to be talking about the details, endings, spoilers, and the like. So, uh, just yeah. uh, uh, just be wary. But if that's okay with you, my dear friends, let us begin. So, let if I propose, let's go down. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Is it nine films? Yeah, nine. So six, seven, eight, nine. So nine films. So let's go down from our ninth ranked nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. So nine being, let's say, the least favorite, and then number one being our most favorite. So. Um, I have a certain, you know, I, I use least favorite because um, I still enjoy, uh, for the most part, uh, the films, even if they're, quote unquote, in the lower part of my ranking list. But I'll, I'll try to elaborate mm -hmm. on that as we go yeah. along. So if that's OK with you, my dear, is, is that OK with you, Tanner? Oh, that's perfect, man. Yeah, All yeah. Right. It's a little bit slimmer than what is the Halloween 13. It's a little yeah. bit, sl you know. <clears throat> Yeah, definitely. But we will go. So let us uh, let's begin. So why don't we start with your number nine pick? Uh, what is your uh, on your number nine for your uh, listing here? I don't I don't think it's going to be that out of uh, out okay. of nowhere. The, my, my number nine pick. Um, I don't even I have a DVD, like a loose DVD copy of it. And I, I wish I could present it. But of course, it's going to be the, the 2010. It's 2010, right? 2020 uh, the remake. Um, just for the sheer, it had, it had so much potential behind it. Um, but it, I think it fails on a lot of levels. Um, I think there are some cool parts. I think there's some cool ideas. Um, if let's, if I'm going to start with the positives, I really like the cast, like, yeah. uh, Katie Cassidy. There's a lot of people that kind of scream mid two thousands, like uh, Katie Cassidy, she was in the Black Christmas remake, and then she was in, um, I think, one of Stranger Call remakes too. Uh, so she, I got some weird nostalgia with her. And there's this dude, uh, Kyle Gallner, um, that's in a bunch of those. Like he was in Jennifer's Body, and he kind of reminds me of like the mid two thousands. And uh, and Clancy Brown that plays Mr. Krabs. I'm a huge Spump Job fan. Like <laughs> I like money. <laughs> <laughs> pet cemetery um, too yeah pet cemetery yeah pet cemetery too like, absolutely <laughs> um but i think you know them getting a director that kind of was just music video sometimes that can work out i feel like david fincher was like just music videos for a long time until sure. you know um yeah. but i think kind of the script really wasn't there the the building up the characters wasn't really there i feel like um like there's a third act that feels like really strong and it really starts to kind of build up these characters like uh nancy and um uh, i think quentin's his name that you finally yeah. start to get some like personality b behind those two yeah. when like uh because a little bit before the first and second act there's like a scene where quentin we find out he's a swimmer and like, what did they mention it? Like once you don't even know anything about these characters yeah. um, and they kind of just use it for a plot point and like a weird dream sequence. Um, but towards the end, they finally start to, you know, mesh a little bit, but it's almost too late, you know? Uh, and I'm not even touching on uh, uh, Jackie Earl of Haley's kind of portrayal. And I think, I think he's a great actor too, man, but I think he kind of did. He kind of sounded like Batman <laughs> throughout uh, the whole movie, you know. Like uh, he he was very uh, Warshak too. He previously had played Warshak in um, Watchmen. The Watchmen, yeah, yeah. 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 And I think he was kind of kind of doing the same thing. Um, I'm tr I'm trying to think of some more strong. There's so many. Uh, there there are some parts in the series where I feel like jump scares are very <laughs> yeah. warranted. So let's say in the original, take in mind, there's a there's a time where you think, uh, Nancy, she's in her room. Uh, you think she had just pulled Freddie out from the dream world, right? And then, oh, it turns out that she didn't, but then Freddie jumps from behind the bed and it's a huge, huge scare. But man, this movie, like I, I counted on my phone, like six attempts 
at good jump scares and none of them were warranted. And I think it's the best, like what not to do with trying to fake out an audience. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah. So um, I'm still trying to focus on the positives, but it's kind of getting to me, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I guess if, if I could, like, what, what did I say to my number nine <laughs> on the list is yes, indeed the 2010, Samuel Bayer, right? Um, yeah, uh, Nightmare, and I have my three three year here, the uh, the Blu Ray okay. here. Yeah, That's so it's cool in the pack, middle. But yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, and so uh, it's it's it, you can get it for a very good price. Anyone who's interested, but uh, yeah. Um, yeah, I I think I I echo your sentiments uh, to the letter. Yeah. I I, um, I think there was a lot of potential, uh, and so I, much which kills yeah. Him, man. Definitely. I think it would have been a very interesting take on it, but, but it's, it, there's, it goes too fast. I think it's, there's not enough room to get to know the characters mm -hmm. except for the later part when they're trying to reach the preschool, you know, and, exactly. and the yep. Quentin and Nancy, right. They're in the car and they're trying to stay awake and, and yeah. they're saying to talking about, you know, uh, uh, let's say if we survive this and let's go on a date or something like that, you know, so it had that yeah. kind of chemistry between them, Rooney Mara. Right. Yep. So uh, it was, and, and I liked some of the aspects to it, like the, the bit towards the end where Nancy's having her dream and she's running down the hall and and suddenly exactly. turns into goo and so you you've yeah. seen this uh these that similar type of dream gag before in like the first yeah. film when Nancy's running up the stairs and he and she lands in like oatmeal steps and yeah. then also in the the beginning of the third film dream wars where uh um uh, Patricia Arquette's Tristan is just running with the yeah. with the girl in her arms and she's stuck in the mud or something but i think those are really cool, but I think this new remake did that dream gag, I think, really well because she sinks and it turns into like blood or something like yeah. that, and and it allows for Freddie behind in the at the end of the corridor there to sort of requote a, a line that he said in Nightmare Four, you know, about how's this for a wet dream, that yeah. kind of thing. So it kind of it was kind of an homage. It was, I thought that was interesting too. But incidentally, too, I also like the. But I, I don't know if they did this on purpose, but not all the characters, but some of the characters, you know, it's Nancy and Quentin, but there's also Chris, which I thought was a link to Kristen. Yeah. I mean, I, I couldn't help but think of Kristen uh, uh, from, uh, you know, three and four. Yeah. And then there was another one. There's Dean at the beginning. I couldn't think of any. Oh, there's Jesse, of course, Jesse, the, the ex-boyfriend. So I thought Jesse was also uh, maybe a uh, 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 purpose or not. It was uh, reminding me of a character from Nightmare 2. Yeah. So uh, I don't know if they're meaning to do these uh, these linkages to the previous series, but but that's where I think it. I was feeling like it was lacking. I was wanting to get more. It, I wanted it to go one of, of uh, various possibilities. I wanted to go either this way or then. I feel like it, it felt as somewhat stagnant to me. It felt like it was just, uh, I wasn't quite sure what it was trying to do with the mythology at the end of the day. Um, and and uh, so I think, was it trying to go full-blown homage? Like say maybe this, or what argue you can be about the, the Friday the 13th remake? Which I think that does, I think, some attempt at trying to go through the various stages of what we know of Jason. But here, it's pretty much one one note in terms of Freddy Krueger. Yeah. Uh, so, and, and we don't, I don't know if I get a chance to know the characters as much as I would like to. And then also, yes, the Freddy Krueger character here, Jackie Haley's performance, is very interesting. Uh, but it's, I'm not sure, I I'm, I wasn't finding myself, how should I put it? It, it was, it felt also quite one note it was like the yeah. dreams i don't know if they had that type of variety to them as i as i felt like we had with say even the first film and then the, the earlier films of the series but also yeah. i'm not sure how you feel about the characterization it's a bit it's a bit tricky uh and how they portray the freddy character or the fred Krueger character um yeah. i do like the bit where they they question whether or not he was guilty or innocent at yeah. some point think, yeah I'm sorry, go ahead, please. Oh, no, no, I, I totally agree. And I, I think there's a lot of things, I think, with the movie that didn't help, like, especially, I know I'm not an actor, but I know there's, when you when it's hard, um, take, for instance, the musical cues, I feel like the Nightmare on Elm Street series is a very musical, very score-driven 
yeah. whether it be rock and roll, whether it be the uh, the the actual score that was written. What is it? Uh, Charles Burns, Burnside, Bernstein. Um, hmm. But I the feel like time, the rem- yeah. yeah, I feel like the the remake didn't use the music for suspense at all, and let alone build up anything for Freddie as an actor because like there are some scenes where it cuts right to Freddie in a dream sequence. I'm like, man, they can't like, like how is he supposed to be scary if you can't, if you can't like build up any suspense. Yeah. So I think that really, I wonder if they were to, to kind of refilm that performance and kind of, or maybe even re-edit it, maybe if it would work a little bit more to right. give, to give him a little bit more credit, but yeah. either way, it's not necessarily working. I don't think so. And then there's something about, there's just something about Robert England's uh, performance, uh, even from the first film, uh, that is, there's a a kind of physicality that he's able to infuse in the role, which, again, I don't, it's just, you can't help but but compare, draw comparisons between the performances because yeah. uh, the Freddy Krueger character, I know they're trying to do different things with the Freddy Krueger character, like emphasize certain unpleasant aspects of the Fred Krueger background story mm-hmm. on, in terms of the children, and which weren't really yeah. there in the first film. Yeah. Uh, so, and, and that made it, I think, all the more maybe uncomfortable or unpleasant. Uh, but I'm not sure how well then the film was able to then use that or try to maybe inform the story in a way uh, beyond those contours, at least for my my uh, viewing of it. So, yeah, that to have such an extreme uh, situation and not not use any kind of story behind it is kind of, you know, like why even kind of throw it in there, you know? Yeah. But as you say, there it's not all, I think. Uh, bad. I think there are a lot of uh, good points or points to be uh, applauded. So, uh, but again, uh, it's number nine for me and number nine for you. So, yeah, that's the yeah Nightmare on Elm Street remake. So, remake. Uh, but yeah, yeah. that we'll have to maybe you know try to give it a rewatch sometime soon. But for now, and uh, the at the end of the day today, it's at our number nine. But let us then continue then. So, uh, number eight. So, what is your number eight favorite nightmare film? Yeah. All right, and I I always have to stress is that like the these films even if they're low doesn't mean I do not love them, and that's uh, I'm going with Freddy's Dead, the Final Nightmare, and for me it's so you're so what is this the sixth movie? You got to do something different, and I understand like people are like oh they made Freddy too funny. I'm like well what are you gonna do man? You got to do something, you know. Um, I think the the set pieces are super cool. I think uh, there's a kill with Carlos. He's a he's a gentleman that's got some some uh, you know uh, a part of the deaf community. Uh, and there's a scene where uh, it, it's a totally mute, and Freddy's behind him trying to make noises, and it is so funny. I think it hits all the right notes, like where the horror comedy stuff, uh, and it, I think it really works. Uh, I don't, I, I've, I've rewatched the end in 3D, maybe because I'm just old. It wasn't working very much <laughs> for me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you get the dream, like a yeah. little dream demon coming out. But, um, yeah. yeah. But, man, and I really love the beginning of this movie, too. Like, um, when uh, John Doe goes through, like, the different phases of the house falling. I think it's really cool. I think it's really ambitious. Um, I think the only thing that kind of falls flat for me on this is, is sometimes it's a little slow. Sometimes it's kind of a rehash of older uh, parts of the series. Like there's, there's uh, characters that kind of remind you of characters from before. Um, and, the, you know, I think it's definitely not the first go-to for me, but if I want like something that's like a romp and, you know, if I want to have a good time, it's still, I think it's still a lot of fun and the kills are great. What did you think of the final battle and the the revelation of of Maggie and or Catherine I should say Maggie Catherine yeah. and I uh, think like I I really I dig the backstory of Freddie kind of like they they kind of really go into the backstory of him growing up like 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 youth then teenager and then young adult and then like married um 
But I think, I don't know whether it was the budget or if it was because they had to film it in 3D. I feel like all the best bits are at the beginning and then it kind of goes downhill from there. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Um, because you're, it's the movie's called Freddy's Dead. You want this big, like, climactic ending and it's just like a pipe bomb. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, and, uh, the, uh, it's an interesting film. It's a very interesting film. It, it'll, it'll come up, I'm sure pretty soon in my own list conversation, but, um, yeah, just very briefly, I would say that it has, it has, I think some strong points and maybe some not so strong points, but I think what it has going forward is it, it is very much, uh, I mean, Rachel Talalay and, and Rachel Talalay's own background, not just with New Line, well, I guess New Line, but also with, not just with the, with the Freddy films, but also with, uh, with John Waters. And so this feels very much like a John Waters take on the, on the series in a, in a manner of speaking. Also Twin Peaks references and also many references there from the, uh, from the, uh, the 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 fried egg in the pan and the the the, the uh, you know don't do drugs or anti drugs as commercials and yeah. and and Nintendo and the power glove and yeah. and uh, and many things like that. So I, I think and the characters I think are really quite strong. Uh, Carlos Spencer John Doe. It's, so it, it had uh, and I think it had some really cool, uh, interesting in camera techniques which I thought worked very well. Like when um, uh, you know the, the 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 father then morphs into Freddy at the yeah, end, you know yeah. what's with yeah. kids today? Huh? No respect, uh, and it's, and that sort of thing. So it, yeah, it's an interesting film, but uh, uh, I'll have uh, some more to say. <laughs> it's not quite there yet, though, for me in my okay, own. Okay, okay. But uh, yeah, Freddy's Dead: The Final Nightmare is your number eight. So. Mm-hmm. Um, so we're now we're going to diverge a bit. So I'm going to talk now about my number eight. Uh, which is uh, not Freddy's Dead, the final nightmare, as you can guess, but uh, it is okay. So I'll, I will, I will quote uh, part of the dialogue from this film. So let's see if you can guess it. So here is a quote from my number eight favorite Nightmare on Elm Street film. So here we go. I, I, I hope I get the quote right from memory. I'm gonna have to go gnash my teeth for the paparazzi. Mm, okay. Right. Okay. Do you what? So what? Do you know what it is? Yeah, I think that's a nightmare. I think that's Greta from Nightmare yeah. Five. Well done. Yes, Nightmare Elm Street yeah. Five, The Dream Child. That's my number eight uh, favorite film. So, like you, um, I'm I'm so sorry. I'm not the biggest fan of the remake. That's why I put it at my number nine. But from here on in, in my list, it's I I think these are great films. I think they are great yeah. for one yeah. reason or another. Um, so that means Nightmare on Elm Street uh, Part Five, The Dream Child. I think it's wonderful. I think it's weird. It's quirky. It's not my favorite, favorite film of the series, mind you, but it still, I think, has a lot of strengths to it. There are weaknesses to it, which I, I grant you. Uh, I mean, it, it does feel, especially after the razzle, dazzle, and the, the the fireworks that was the previous film, Nightmare on Elm Street 4, The Dream uh, Master, this does feel like a quieter film or does feel like a smaller film. Uh, in that way, uh, that felt grand, but this feels very intimate and 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 more almost retrospective. Uh, there, so that might be seen as a weakness, but I, I think it's it's uh, it gives us more time for uh, getting to know the characters, and we have a smaller group of characters relative to Nightmare Four, which some people might think it's a disadvantage. I think it actually works to the film's benefit. So uh, we have what I always forget: Greta and Yvonne and Mark, and then Dan. We knew Dan from before. Uh, but, uh, and then of course, Alice and Alice's dad, um, uh, just a quick, quick note about Alice's dad, the actor who plays Alice's dad, you know, the, the never sleep again documentary, right? You've seen this, right? So, you know, they go from film to film to film, they interview the, the people in, uh, who appeared in the film. So when they get to nightmare five or nightmare four, nightmare five, that's where they interview the cast. So Alice's dad comes in. I, do you remember what he looks like when he's being interviewed? He looks yeah, just yeah. like, yeah, he's got the hat and he's, he looks just like Johnny Depp, you know, Johnny Depp when he's, so it's like, like it's, it's, it's such, I don't know, it's so like, oh, he's the most Johnny Depp looking of all the people who are being interviewed. 
Yeah, so, like more than Johnny Depp. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it, but Johnny Depp's not even being interviewed in this. So it's yeah, like yeah. he's kind of standing in for Johnny. It's, it's really interesting. But anyway, I like the dad relationship between uh, Alice and her father. And I, I you know, he gets it, a bark, it, man. Yeah, he gets a yeah, exactly. You yeah. know, like with his with his uh, uh, short sleeve shirt there, and like you know, I you know, I didn't want to embarrass you, and yeah, yeah I'm still yeah, I'm still going to my meetings. Yeah, let's go. Yeah, it's just good for you, uh, bro. Yeah, exactly, you exactly. Yeah. yeah, he's trying, he's trying, yeah. and as you say, it is an arc from the fourth film, which I think is is definitely worthy. Um, I, I love the continuity, especially between. Uh, well, I guess you know uh, uh, the. Well, I guess we'll get to the jump between three and four later. But I do like the continuity. There's this, there's this arc, especially the Alice character and the Dan character and the father character, yeah. from four to five, which I really like. Um, and then speaking of Alice, I think she's, she's become this a very uh, a confident person. But also, it, there's talking about her pregnancy and her her child, and and there's some complex aspects that come up with Dan's parents and. And the like, which I think be, adds a very, I think, interesting level of, of uh, a very nuanced and subtle uh, discussions here, and uh, and uh, very almost uh, uh, quite uh, quite even certain. It goes into certain uh, areas where it might be somewhat sensitive in terms of discussion. But I, I like how the film handles that. I think it handles it in a very, uh, very mature and uh, quite uh, almost refreshingly direct way. Let me put it that way. Uh, while still focusing on the the horror genre aspect of this being a nightmare film, um, I think if I had to say a few things would be uh, um, like uh, I I wish they had the uncut version uh, made available. I know. I mean, I, I have. I remember watching it on the VHS tape. You know, you had to find the one with the yellow, little yellow circle on the cover, which indicated the uncut version, so you could see the longer version of Dan's motorcycle thing and you know, bad year, Dan, and then also Greta and that whole thing. And it's like, what what's going on with Greta? You don't know in the theatrical version, but you realize it's like 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 kind of jello from her stomach. You know, and it's kind of gross and stuff, but it's. Uh, it's it's pretty intense, and then uh, they don't. There's no, I guess, there's no uh, uncut version of Mark's death, right? It's just simply like Super Freddy, and like yeah. you know, and it becomes like a piece of paper. Yeah. Uh, but uh, the but and then Yvonne, I just have to say one thing. Yvonne, she is like like she she does everything. She's like a you know a diver. She's a swimmer. She's a, a lifeguard. She's also yeah. is she a lifeguard? She's also a nurse. Yeah, She's also a high school is. student. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. She does it. Yeah. So, um, and I do like how there is a bit of tension between Yvonne and the rest of the group. She doesn't believe them and almost to the point of breaking up their relationship, their friendship. Yeah. Um, you don't see that often in the nightmare films. You don't see this, this kind of tension between the characters. Yeah, real you do some, yeah, yeah, exactly. And to the point of almost like destroying their friendship but then you know she she finds like freddie and uh you know you're not crazy you're not, you know yeah. so that's, and then she actually comes to the end uh to the rescue in terms of freeing amanda's soul um you know, look for me in the top you know you know you'll never find her but she helps she finds her so that's great yeah. um and then i guess i'm sorry so i'm just going on and i just uh, but it does have some weak oh, points it has, uh, I don't know, I'm not sure how I feel about how Freddy is, is depicted here. He seems weaker. He seems, uh, it's, he seems a lot less assured. You know, he's like all mangled up after he's been ripped apart by the, the, the hundred maniacs or something. And then he's all like this and, and uh, just, he doesn't seem, he doesn't seem like the same Freddy that I knew from, say, like one, two, three, and four and four. So yeah. uh, I, I always, I always feel like he's, he's like, he's like the, the, the Godfather three, Michael Corleone yeah. here. He feels different. He doesn't feel like yeah. the same Freddie. So I always felt that was a bit odd for my tastes. Uh, uh, but, uh, and I'm not sure it, it's an interesting take about the Jacob character and Freddie and, and the relationship between them. I'm not, you know, but um, it's a little bit, uh, and there are some, cuts and moments that feel a little bit unwieldy uh i'd go back again to i like mark very much but that whole super freddy thing i like super freddy but it's it's you know it's suddenly he becomes like a piece of paper so i i found that to be a bit uh a bit uh, a bit strange maybe it's it's trying to ease us in into what we're going to expect in terms of freddy's at the final nightmare but uh there are some moments that i feel kind of uh hit or miss for me 
Uh, but uh, it, I think overall, again, it's my number eight, but that doesn't indicate that I think it's a, a very bad experience. On the contrary, I enjoy it very much, uh, w- you know, uh, with certain weaknesses notwithstanding. Uh, but I'm sorry, I, I totally took up the conversation here. Oh, what do you no, think? No, 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 no. Uh, because I don't want to. I don't want to uh, spill spill too many beans before uh, I have it in my pick. But I think it's one thing I wanted to add in is for the longest time, being that I've I watched it for the first time on DVD, I didn't know about the Greta. He's like feeding her, her. <laughs> you know, there's these uncut parts that it didn't take me until I was like until YouTube was around. You know. Um, to find the to watch those uncut scenes and man they're great i really wish we get a release with it fully uncut yeah yeah definitely you know and also dan when the the thing is about to stab dan's calf you kind of just get it yeah yeah when the uncut it's just it's really gross but here it's just he just kind of scratches his 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 leg and that's pretty much it but he's like ah and yeah. then he's like, yeah. it, like his skull yeah. starts to like, the skin yeah. explodes and all that stuff. Yeah. Oh yeah, crazy. yeah. But uh, but Andrew. Oh wait, so that that was my number eight. So we've talked about so far nine and eight. Uh, and so what about number seven, my dear friend? So what's your number seven favorite uh, nightmare film? All right. So I got a little uh, okay. Jason right here. Okay. Okay. All right, so this this was pretty like when I was a kid. You know, I was able to catch uh, Jason X in theaters, uh, but I really wanted a nightmare movie, man. And I, I want to say that Freddy vs. Jason, it kind of leads. I think it does Jason, uh, of, it does a really good job of the Friday the 13th. Uh, like, uh, I think it does good by the franchise, but I feel like at the heart of it, it's probably more of a Freddy movie. That's how I feel to me. Uh, but I think... It's like perfectly executed, like popcorn action, man. Just the last like 30 minutes is just like, has you like frothing at the mouth for more like Freddy and Jason action. I almost wanted them to do a sequel of Freddy versus Jason and just have more fights, you know? Um, but I just remember being a kid and like I said, after, after Jason X and just getting the dose of Freddy, um, it was, it was just awesome man i think the the cast is really cool um i think the 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 musical talent isn't as good as like a uh like a ll cool j in h2o but i'll still take kelly Rowland. if you're if you're at the crib you throw on some destiny's child you know you're gonna be all right <laughs> but um yeah i think it's the one-liners are great i think the Kill Bill esque blood effects are amazing. I think it's you know, uh, there's some other things. I think Franken. It's almost like a Frankenstein Jason that I really enjoy. Sometimes mm. I feel a little bit bad that you know I think Kane Hodder really wanted to be in this movie, but you know mm. I think it was a Ken Kersinger. Yeah. I think he did really good as Jason too. Uh, but it's just, it really, I get a lot of nostalgia because it just reminds me of the 2000s, like the early 2000s. Um, and I think it does a great job, uh, it's especially at the beginning, kind of retelling both of their backstories. Yeah. Um, I think it starts off really strong. Um, yeah. Do you got, do you, did you, you said you saw this one in theaters? I did. Yes, I did very much. Yeah. And uh, I have to say, yes, my number seven actually is, yes, that uh, oh, is it's it? here, yes. Freddy versus Jason, yes. Ronnie Yu's Freddy versus Jason. Um, and I, I have similar feelings. I think it feels more like a Freddy film than a Jason film, although it does Jason, I think, justice. I mean, I know this is a nightmare discussion, but uh, just very briefly, I think it does touch upon the, the, the Friday the 13th mythology quite well. And I think it expands on it very well in terms of, of the inner psychosis of Jason. We get into his head a little bit and his perspective about uh, and uh, his relationship with his mind. And water, too. We understand now water is a weakness. Yeah. Um, although that doesn't explain how he was able to swim on underwater throughout the whole thing in in uh, um, uh, Friday the Thirteenth Part Eight, Jason takes Manhattan. Remember, he's swimming and he, he climbs up the thing. So, yep. if he was afraid of water, how should he? Be? Anyway, that's that's beside the point. Uh, 
That's beside can the you point. Say but it's he, a little murky. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or uh, you know, but any event, and, okay, you can kind of understand, you know, in a fire or water, how can we work with this? So that's that's mm -hmm. very cool, and I think it does. I think walk the line very well in terms of the over the top two thousands horror campiness, which is obviously there. Um, it's I think it's a, it's its own style in and of itself, but I think it does it very well on the one hand, and then it just it goes to its grindhouse back to the basics uh it uh uh aesthetic as well so i like those two feelings you know the the 2000s quote-unquote modern aesthetic on the one hand but also understanding that these are two horror icons that have come from uh essentially decades back and so uh and i like how yeah. it, front and center ultimately and i like also to how it, it weaves its way to the 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 main events uh, which are the Freddy yeah. versus Jason and, you know, in the dream wor world and also in the real world, so to speak. So uh, I like yeah, that very you, much. It gives you little tastes throughout the whole movie of them kind of like battling until the end, which yeah. is great. Yeah, I, I do like that. And, and uh, it, it uh, I think what I like to, there, it does give a little bit more insight too into the Freddy background. I love the intro of this film. Uh, yeah. I really love the. I think the intro is one of the best intros of the entire nightmare uh, filmography in terms of, excuse me, in terms of the background of Freddy, and, and it really turn, takes it a very sinister turn. Uh, almost, it it really almost it's not quite nightmare two thousand ten remake extreme uh, yeah. because that goes into very unpleasant. It it slightly goes into some unpleasant territory here as well, more so than the earlier yeah. films. It does touch yeah. upon this idea of. Of, uh, uh, of you know this uh, kind of a uh, sort of sexual predator aspect of it. It doesn't overstay its yeah. welcome, but it does touch upon that a little, which is uh, I'll be perfectly honest, somewhat uncomfortable. But um, yeah. uh, it it does have I think it 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 goes there and it retreats just enough, and it, it understands too that the main point is the final kind of battle or battles between these two titans. Uh, which I think is done very well, very creatively, and I, I like how it turns. It's not just one note either. I I like how it uh, it it transforms very nicely. Yeah, Ronnie knew, Ronnie Yu knows how to film action too, because yeah. I don't know if you've ever been. The main thing, uh, main one I always remember was watching movies like uh, like The Transporter Two, and then watching. I don't know if you've ever seen The Transporter yeah. Three, but the, I don't. The action scenes for me are just terrible. Like there's certain ways I feel like you could film action, and I'm just so glad we get these two horror icons that got that got a good, you know, that got a good run at it. You know, it wasn't just yeah. like quick cuts and you know. Yeah. And so I, I like to. Oh, I'm sorry, I interrupted. Go ahead. I apologize. No, 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 no. No, I just say I definitely respect them for that. Yeah, I, I, I do too, and I think, you know, there, again, there are some weaknesses of the film, mind you. I, I, I I'll be honest. I'm not. I think I I fare less well with the sort of two th the early part of the film than the final third of the film, and even you know it's a quote unquote recent or more recent film. There are some bits of dialogue that I think are not they don't date as well. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So you know, but uh, I think uh, uh, and then, uh, but I do like the I do like the fact that I think at the end of the day it does very much respect the two uh, legacies of these two characters respectively and that includes Freddy Krueger yeah. and Nightmare on Elm Street uh, the, the 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 series and the mythology while building on it somewhat so I, I do credit it very much for that so that's why it's at uh, uh, number seven for me here as well yeah and a lot of a lot of love it shows a lot of love to Nightmare 3 too like the Weston Hills the Hypnosil yes. Hypnosil you well know done. all these yeah. little you know and uh, if anybody and I, I don't mean to just uh keep on going on the Freddy vs. Jason, but it's got a lot of story for a movie that you would think it's just a Freddy vs. Jason movie. Yeah. You know? That that's a great point. That's a really great it does. It has it goes it really has it's it's really quite complex and it's like uh you know it's like a um uh, very you know Freddy's very Machiavellian. He's trying to use Jason. And I like that aspect that Jason turns on him somewhat and, and then they become enemies. And I, I also like your mentioning about there's homages to part three. There's also an homage to part two in terms of taking over the body and, and, and yeah. operating in the real work or so to speak, which I think is very much a la Jesse in part two. But uh, yeah. um, 
Yeah, I, but so again, it's it's at number is it seven? Yeah, number seven for me, but it's uh, it's still very strong work, I think. Yeah. Yeah. But all right. Uh, all right. So we are at what is it? Number six here. Yeah. Number six. So please, please uh, tell us what is your number six favorite um, nightmare film? So now I got the uh, I got the dream child now. Okay. All right. And I'm man. I'm another one with the with the set pieces in this, and it could have just been because I, when I rewatched it recently, for here I just I just for some reason I thought all the bold ideas that were in the movie, um, maybe they didn't all necessarily work, but I'm just glad they kind of went for it. But I love what you said, how it kind of like it braces you a little bit for the Freddy's Dead, uh, kind of like the quirkiness and and everything that will come later on in the series that, that uh, you also said that it was a little bit more intimate, which I thought it was, man, that's perfect wording for it. Um, but yeah, it was cool. I wish we would have seen the, the kind of embrace from part three to part four, how it was from part four to part five, kind of like mm. how you saw the, the, the characters overlap and, and stuff like that. And the, the dad getting, a, a character arc it was it was blowing my mind the other night when i was watching it when he says a line something like uh oh i'd lo I'd, I'd love to hear uh, a yeah. little boy in the house again i was yeah. like it's like bro is, is friday five about to make me start crying and you yeah <laughs> you know because right. it was such a you could see the, such a torm term turmoil uh relationship between the father and son in part four so that was cool that he got his little homage you know yeah, that's a really good point about that moment between him and, and Alice. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Alice asks, like, are you disappointed in me? And that, that's stuff you don't usually see in, in, a, yeah, in a film. Yeah. And it's, it's very, it's, it's very direct, which I, I really, and I, I love the answer. He's, he's not, he's not disappointed at all. And uh, he says, he hopes it would be a boy. That's, that's a very powerful moment. And yeah, it, it reminds me too, like the last time I remember seeing Rick was, was it you know, the little meatball or something? Like, yeah. So I, I think of the little meatball Rick whenever I see that, you know, the, the, and it suddenly turns into like this really, it's not, Rick, it's like suddenly a real, I mean, it, it's, it was great for the time, but it's a real fake looking meatball or like yeah, that. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. but, uh, yeah, but uh, um, yeah. Oh, come on. Ah, yeah. Yeah. We'll get to that. We'll get to that when we get to Nightmare 4. But you're right. You're right. There's some tender moments uh, in Nightmare. But what what is it about it then? Why, why isn't it, say, higher on your list then? Why, why do you have it at this, what is it, number six here? Yeah. And see, I, I do love the characters. I just think that the, maybe the first half is a little slow and it starts to pick up um, kind of towards the end. I like how they do... Um, there's a cool thing about Nightmare on Elm Street endings, each one of them, you know, there's usually two that kind of do the same thing. So in part three, you have somebody that's doing something in the dream world, right? And then you have somebody doing something in the real world to try to beat Freddy. And I, I like how they got uh, Yvonne. She's in the real world doing her thing while Alice is in the dream world trying to do her thing as well. Yeah. Um, and... I think that if it was a, I think it's original, but there's things like, like, um, like the desk being kind of tapered down, not in the uncut version, but I, I, I still think there could have been a higher body count personally for me. Maybe that's just being a, a, a you know, slash movie fan. Um, but just maybe if it was a little less slow, I think it would make it a little higher. Mm, mm, yeah, that's a good point. It's a very good point. Um, I, I like, I, I was thinking about too, the, the climax of this film is very much like a, a nightmare three scenario, you know, people mm -hmm. coming together, uh, you know, different, it's, it's like Christopher Nolan, different spaces and editing together in that way. Yeah. It, it's a very, it's, it has that aspect to it. And, and there's some, it, it has a kind of inception like aspect. I mean, this is, it would be interesting to see Christopher Nolan direct direct a Nightmare on Elm Street film. It might be something oh, that is akin great. to like, yeah, like Nightmare on Elm Street 5 or something, but with all the, yeah. the, 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 the paradoxes that occur and, and mm -hmm. the like. So, uh, but, and I do like the, the, the differing uh, sort of editing of action. Uh, yeah. You know, Yvonne does her thing and then they're fighting in the dream world. And, and so it has a lot of Nightmare 3 vibes to it. You know, like uh, many of the climaxes of the film, of the films have a kind of one-on-one -on -one final standoff. 
Right. Yeah. Save for Nightmare 3. I think Nightmare 3 is the only one where it's 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 similar type of dueling action, what's going on in the junkyard versus what's going on in the dream world and the fighting, etc. So uh so that's an interesting point. I, I like that uh, that obviously uh that observation that you make there. Yeah. Yeah, because what are a, a lot of the ones so I'd say the two strongest ones that get reused, right, are the are pulling him out into the real world or having the buddy kind of like you're in the real world. I'm in the dream world. So I, I like how some movies harken back to to either one of those steps. What do you think of the makeup, and what do you think of the Freddy character here in Nightmare Five? When I was younger, I didn't love the Part Five makeup, but I think it kind of looks like throughout the movies, he kind of getting older, and I kind of dug yeah. it more than I ever have this last rewatch. Yeah. I don't yeah. think it's the best. Like I wouldn't put it. I wouldn't put it in my top three, but I still think it's, you know, I think it's pretty yeah. commendable. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not a, I'm, I don't know what the, it feels like, I don't know, whenever I think of Nightmare 5 and the Freddy makeup, it has a kind of pared down look, especially when compared to, say, for lack of a better phrase, like the Domino's pizza look of Nightmare 4. This has a kind yeah. of Sabaro pizza look, you know? Yeah, it's so, kind yeah. of bird-like. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> you know, it's yeah. weird. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So but I will say, it's got my favorite line of dialogue in any of the any of the movies and that's oh bon appetit bitch <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah oh <laughs> filet de babi yes yes nothing yes. for the but the best for greta yeah that's right it makes me laugh oh, every time it's so funny gosh yeah that that's a uh, that's yeah that is a uh, that was some of the real great uh, lines of dialogue here right you know, I don't yeah. like to swear, but you know, time to die, you you know, Scarface. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That bit, I, I enjoy that very much. So, and he looks, um, uh, uh, yeah. There's some really good lines of dialogue here. Come to think of it, mm -hmm. um, all the uh, stuff with uh, the, like the need for speed. You right. know, like that's right. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. That's ah, gotcha. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, bad year, Dan, yeah, bad yeah. year Dan yeah bad year Dan yes bad year I like how he doesn't because obviously that that's acid right but I like yeah, how yeah. he doesn't pour it on the car he pours it on his arm mm -hmm. and he rips off his arm and he puts his arm on the thing to put, <laughs> like that is so much work yeah. Like wow, Freddie, uh, he's he's a workaholic. You know, he yeah. he he finds he doesn't find the easy way. He finds the way that is like the the artistically pleasing motion. You know, it wouldn't yeah. be it wouldn't do for him to just do to, to pour it directly on the door there. No, he has to pour it on his arm, rip off his arm, and do the thing there, which I I, I have to admire. You know, there's something he's like a Picasso, I suppose, of of, yeah. uh, of horror. But anyway, uh, but uh, yeah, so that's what is it? What was it? Number six, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, number six. Okay, so let me now go to my number six, uh, which is so I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, um, sp say a line of dialogue here. So let's see if you can guess it here. So my okay. number six is okay. Let's what line of dialogue can I use? Okay, okay, here we go. Okay, um, Mookie, I got your nose, Mookie. <laughs> I yeah, want so my children back. Yes. Okay. So what what film is it? What film is it's, that? Uh, it's none other but Roseanne in Freddy's <laughs> Dead. That's right. Freddy's Dead: The Final Nightmare. Yes. Yeah. So that is my number six uh, favorite film, and I think for reasons that you mentioned before, it is just off the wall bonkers. This is this is just. Uh, I don't it's yeah it's it's funny it's not I don't know if it's scary but it's funny but it it reminds me that I think I think of all the horror franchises of the 80s the classic horror franchises like the Friday the 13th or the Halloween or or, or the uh, you know, even other ones like let's say Silent Night Deadly Night or something like mm -hmm. that I always think of them as slasher horror films mm -hmm. Nightmare on Elm Street I they have the slasher film elements to them, don't get me wrong, but I never think of them like those. I think of them as like off the wall 80s fairy tales, violent, yeah. gory fairy tales, but they're fairy tale films. And so, if I think of the nightmare films as slasher films, this film becomes a disappointment for me. But yeah. if I think of the nightmare films as fairy tale films, and I mean that very positively. If I think of those fairy yeah, tale yeah. films, this this uh, succeeds very well for me. And so it's not a scary film for me. It 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 doesn't feel very like some of the things 
I mean, it's, it maybe the most intense uh, moment is the Carlos scene. That's really gross and really intense yeah. uh, and very, very unnerving. Uh, yeah. And I get nervous even now watching. But then it, it it really goes off the wall with Spencer and the, you know, and that kind of thing. And <laughs> and uh, I just uh, uh, why am I why am I forgetting the character's name? Is it uh, uh, Tracy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. yes, yes, and uh, she, uh, she has a very. I, I like her character. I mean, I love the interview, the Never Sleep Again interview uh, with the actor. She's there with someone like next to her the entire yeah. time. It's very, with the, yeah, it's very interesting. But uh, yeah. um, uh, but I, I find this world to be just as a zany romp, a Lisa zany romp, <laughs> and ah, so yeah. it has a. Yeah, today I'm here all day, folks. But anyway, the the um, uh, the it has it. It just it it's not scary. It's weird. It's funny. It, it, there's some gross out moments, but it's not scary. But if you're okay with that, then it you can just go with the flow for, uh, and it becomes this really uh, bizarre take, which I appreciate, especially when you go to the sixth one. Now, there are some moments. There are some references I think are really great. It's great to see Alice Cooper, uh, you know, and the, yeah. although I never could get you know, the idea of how he died. I ordered the, ah, uh, that thing. And I get the 3D <laughs> effect, but it's just, you know, uh, it's just, yeah. uh, uh, you want to know the secret of pain. You can just stop feeling it. You can start using, ah, uh, ah, uh, and that kind of thing. Uh, but yeah. it's nice to see Alice Cooper in this really brief, but very memorable role. And it's nice to see Roseanne, you know, the, the Roseanne, Tom Arnold, brief Twin Peaks kind of moment. It's nice to see references yeah. to Nintendo. Johnny Depp. It's great to see Johnny Depp again. Yeah. Um, and, and Rachel Talalay. I'm a big admirer of her work. I think she's done uh, uh, in terms of not only in her um, uh, uh, history with Nightmare Films and also John Watterson, but also uh, some great uh, TV work in Doctor Who. I think she's directed mm -hmm. among the best modern Doctor Who stories uh, uh, there with is. Tank, so Tank Girl, right? Tank Girl, yes, well done. Yes, well yeah. done. Lori yeah, Petty. Yeah. And so, so, yeah. um, uh, so just uh, it's it's great to see that. I love the creativeness of it. I like I like the 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 zaniness of it. And there's just some, there are some parts that are kind of. And I like the John Doe dream sequence, uh, and the dream sequences. And there, it really has a weird way of developing Springwood as this like like other dimension place. Uh, and the whole idea of taking Elm Street outside of Springwood, which has a kind of Freddy versus Jason vibe to it as well, which I think is very yeah. interesting. Um, uh, Doc, I don't know about you, the whole thing, I like, you know, Doc grabbing the sweater. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, go, oh, yeah, yeah. It's, so, so that, that kind of got a bit, bit, uh, bit interesting for me. But, uh, uh, I mean, there's some, again, there's some moments that just don't quite work. But yeah. uh, you take them as a whole, and I think uh, it, uh, it it becomes a sort of fun ride. Uh, yeah. For better or for worse, it's a fun ride. Now, it doesn't feel like the grand send-off that I think would have been easy. I feel like Freddy versus Jason feels like the better grand send-off. Yeah. You know, Maggie versus Freddy has a less of an impact to me than Jason versus Freddy. Mm -hmm. And I feel like if there's any gonna if there's any gonna if there's gonna be any kind of grand set of that film with the Ronio film is it for me? But so the Maggie versus Freddy fight feels somewhat anticlimactic to be perfectly perfectly frank. As you mentioned, yeah. a pipe bomb, rail that kind of thing. Yeah. But but uh, and like I and when he's she bites his nose and he like you know oh yeah, God, yeah, how much it hurts to be yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> like that, yeah so. And uh, uh, so uh, that feels somewhat anticlimactic. And I love suddenly how like ducks just ah, the door, ah, let's go in it. And yeah. and so, but it's so okay. So those weaknesses, I think, for me, weaknesses aside, I think overall, it I think it it serves a function very well, which is showing a different dimension. Freddie is funny uh, and very zany and off the wall and bonkers and Looney Tunes. Yes, but that's yeah. a part of the the mystique and and to create different. Uh, imaginative corridors for the the dream sequences, I think, was uh, quite quite effective. Yeah, and man, I would love to talk to the director just to see. You know, I don't know how you feel about it, but I feel like the ending compared to the other parts of the movie is like I really do wonder if it was like the three D camera that was kind of like 
putting a damper on things because I feel like the other scenes are really like ambitious. And then the last one is just like people in a basement, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Could be. And also the dream demon stuff, I, I'll be honest. I, I think that's, that's like what they look like. I don't know what the dream demons are. They look like, like, I don't know. Like, like a little bait of fish. <laughs> yeah. Or, or like, I, I, you know, a pasta that was just left out in the, on the table too. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So, but, uh, I don't mean, any, I mean, if anyone's out there who's watching, who designed the dream demons, it, yeah, I, I'd, I'd love to hear about this. The dream demons, you know? Yeah. But, uh, it was like, uh, I love the little, so like, I think of all the sequences, you know, we get throughout the nightmare series and, and Freddy's nightmares, you know, you always get the little bit where Freddy, and the boiler and and the fire and everything you you get it in some sequences. I think yeah. you get it in like the new uh, the remake. You also get it in Freddy's Nightmares, and you also yeah. get it in in um, uh, I want to say I guess what other uh, sequence I forget. The, the but... beginning of uh, Freddy vs Jason, right? Thank you. Yes, yeah. Thank you, Freddy yeah, versus yeah. Jason. Yeah, but so we're, we're now uh, uh, expected to believe that in the little brief moment between the fire getting started and him. Uh, dying in the fire he's having this conversation with the flying dude. you know i want it all yes you will be forever up there. so that that's what happened so they they didn't cover that in freddy's nightmares but uh, oh well oh well um uh, so i think oh, that's so also bit yeah 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 uh, and you you forgot the power glove yeah boink, 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 boink. Yeah, yeah yeah spencer but uh oh well um Anyway, so yes, Fred is dead. The final line. It's great. So Iggy Pop. I think it's a great ending. It's a great know, montage. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, uh, uh, but and I remember the hype too for Freddy's Dead when it came out. You know. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And see, but, that's those are stories that I love to hear because a lot of the time, like, I don't know, some some horror fans they get so weird about the sequels, but I want to hear like stories about the place and time, like before these movies came out. Like, oh, how was it when it hit? uh video like would you like did everybody freak out because i feel like even in the later 90s like before this box set came out everybody i knew had a copy of the fourth movie like somewhere like even people that didn't even like horror movies they're like you got oh you got a copy of dream master here just randomly you know yeah so that's that's the kind of stuff i love to hear man yeah it was a. Uh... It was a big deal, I think, when it came out. There was a lot of press. There was a lot of uh, TV shows about it, I remember. Uh, and uh, I was excited about it, too, very much so, because yeah. it felt like it felt like uh, something that was that felt like a different direction than Nightmare 5. It felt fun. That's what I, I yeah, want to say. There's, there's a fun in the air, which undoubtedly I think it is fun. I mean, weaknesses aside, I think it, it's, it's uh, if you like it or not, it's still, I think, endeavoring to be a fun film. Yeah. And I think it's like when even when it comes to nineties horror movies, I think it's a must must see for early ninety, you know. Yeah. yeah. And and you know, I know Wes Craven didn't have Wes Wes Craven, excuse me, didn't have anything directly to do with this, but it does feel very similar in in vibe to a, a Wes Craven film that was also around this time released, which is called The People Under the Stairs. It, it does have a similar type of vibe to it. it uh, so I, I think there's something in as you mentioned with the kind of the zeitgeist, which I think these films capture uh, in their own uh, peculiar ways, very, very well. And I think this is no exception to that. But anyway, Freddy's Dead, The Final Nightmare, I think it's still going to be uh, uh, debated and, and discussed uh, going forward. But it is it is what it is. So Freddy's Dead, The Final Nightmare. So that is number six, right? So we've reached the six. So now we're in the final five. Uh, so five. let us go. Yes, number five, your fifth favorite nightmare film, please. So this, I hope this one isn't an upset, but... I've got the the Dream Master. I got number four. Uh, only, only a little bit farther down on my list. Man, this one is huge. You can feel like the budget. You know, you can feel uh, everything. I just I got so attached to the characters in Nightmare Three. Uh, I think the recasting of of Kristen just hurt it a little bit for me. I think like if you could bring them back, I would I would put it a little bit higher. But I think this movie is is a lot of fun, though. I think the characters are awesome. Um, I think th I do think there are a lot of characters, but um, it's good to see Kincaid and Joey. Uh, my, I don't know why they would get rid of 
curse uh Kristen's character and then kind of work on Alice. I thought that was kind of a weird way to kind of segue the series and build it up, but I understand. I think they did a pretty good job of it. But, you know, to show her family life and working in the diner and, and stuff like that, kind of like uh how uh about to graduate high school if you can be in like a dead end job and stuff like that. Um but yeah, I think there's a lot of stuff that works. I think the the kills are really fun. And I think Freddy is very fun. Um, I think that uh, Alice does a great job uh, throughout the whole movie. Uh, I think there's a kind of a little bit of problem at the end for me, um, just the way it wraps up. But I think overall it does a pretty good job of of being the segue from part three. Oh, interesting. So this is your number five. It's my number five. Okay. All right. So I, I, I guess have to let the cat out of the bag here. So my number five. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll quote the film. Can you guess mm. what my number five is? Okay. okay. All right. Um, uh, mind over matter. Yeah. 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 This part, part four, four, Nightmare on Elm Street yes. part four. Yes. Uh, and uh, yes, this is my number five favorite uh, film as well in the series, I think. I I think I understand its epic nature, as you mentioned. And I think it's all over the place. Totally yeah. all over the place, tonally. Um, it feels like, and there's a moment to, it feels like a, uh, it, like a popcorn action flick in many ways, which is a good thing, which is a really good yeah. thing. Um, but it, there are some just moments where you just think, what the heck is going on here? Um, like the, uh, the, the cockroach scene and the, uh, that, th which is very effective on the one hand, but then you have Rick's death scene, which I think is very underwhelming. Uh, and you have yeah. the pizza scene and then the, mm -hmm. the, the, what the, the, the asthma Sheila, which is Sheila, right? Her, her, yeah, 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 her scene. Yeah. Like, oh, and then this, uh, yeah. and, uh, and the robot hand that comes out like, what are the, and then, uh, right. Yeah. The, the continuity with the uh, nightmare three characters, uh, Joey Kincaid and Kristen, of course, Tuesday night, uh, being cast as Kristen. Uh, and so an interesting performance, you know, it's of course, uh, Compared with uh, uh, Patricia Arquette, it's maybe I, I have a similar type of feeling as you. It would have been interesting to see Patricia Arquette reprise her role in this film. Might have been different, but I think Tuesday Night does well uh, for what the role is, uh, and uh, I think there is yeah maybe the chemistry isn't quite as much there as it was in Nightmare Three. I mean, there's a lovely chemistry between the characters there, but uh, yeah. yeah, and I think it, it there's some. There's some moments too that I think are kind of uh, weird and odd, which I think serve the film's benefit. Although it does have that "what's going on" type of feel, like um, little things like the pizza sequence and Rick. I mean, I go back to Rick. I'm fascinated by the character of Rick. I don't know how you feel. I'm just yeah. I go back and forth in terms of my feelings about Rick. He's kind of just, you know, hello, baby, and the thing yeah. when he's in the elevator in his dream, like. I'm going yeah, yeah, yeah. down like that and because the speed and, and the yeah. burr and the, and that sort of thing. So, uh, uh, and he's like, uh, he's got that kind of wisecracking attitude about it, which is a definite contrast to a character like Dan. Yeah, um, yeah. although Dan pieces it together, remember after the funeral and, uh, I, um, I, she, she's talked to, I always forget the character, uh, the, the character played by, uh, Brooke Thies. Um, uh, the, 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 uh, the, the, oh, yeah, the, the cockroach. Word. Yeah. Yeah. What's her... yeah. Yeah. Uh, That's so, kill me um, too, man. yeah, me too. Me too. Uh, uh, but they're in the, the cemetery and, uh, they say, you know, uh, uh, like Alice has absorbed the, the essence of, Sh of Sheila at the end of mind over man. You know, she never said that, you know, it's, it's like, uh, you know, and, and like dad pieces, you know, it's, she's changing after every death. Yeah. Yeah, so he pieces together. He's like Columbo yeah, yeah. or something. He's really, he knows exactly what's going on. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so to his credit, he's, he's, uh, he's understanding, but Alice is a character. I don't, we, we've touched upon a little bit, but what do you think about Alice as a character? I do see, I do like her as a character. Um, Lisa Wilcox. Wish, yeah. Yeah. I think, and I think she's a great actress too. Um, but I think there's, there's definitely something in me that misses kind of like setting up the Kristen character and kind of having mm -hmm. her 
be the arc, kind of like how Nancy was. You know, if you're going to have somebody kind of take the stand-in role in the mm. Nightmare series. Um, but I don't think, when it's all said and done, I don't think Alice did a bad job, you know, yeah. in, in four and five. Yeah, I think so. It's a very, I think there's also an arc to her character. As well. I'm just looking at it. It's birth thesis, it's Debbie. Debbie, the character. Debbie, Debbie. yeah. Yes. And uh, so, yeah, I, I like how she's absorbing the, the essences of the characters. And she's building, and I like the whole thing with the mirror and her slowly gaining uh, self confidence in herself. Uh, there's the moments where she daydreams, which I think is an interesting. These are surprises, and and the way that yeah, she's yeah. handling her relationship with her father and working in this job, and you know, I don't want to be here forever, and that, yeah. uh, that kind of stuff. And the the, the final climactic. But what do you think of the final climactic battle? I thought it was pretty good. Out of out of my favorites, I know we're getting this is my number five pick. Uh, but out of my favorites, I think it's getting towards the end. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I think I like the mirror aspect for Alice. I didn't love it for Freddie though. Him looking at his reflection and being, you know. Um, but I think really a lot of the other stuff works. Like when it comes to like. You know, when he's getting torn apart by like the little the little demons inside, I think that looks really cool. I think the one, especially the one on the head, I think looks really cool. Um, yeah, and I think the overall, the effects in the movie look great. You know, especially, yeah. especially when, who'd you say, Debbie? I think the roach effects look great. Yeah, that was gross. Yeah. That was really, really gross. And yeah. uh, uh, it was, and then he just kind of squashes the box. Uh, so. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, yeah. yeah, amazing, amazing effects for its time. I agree, but uh, uh, and the the song too, the opening song, uh, uh, and uh, I like the opening song very much. Mm -hmm. but, uh, anyway, yes, yeah, so that's that's number five, Nightmare on Elm Street Part Four, The Dream Master. That's for you and me, then our fifth uh, picks here. So let's yeah. get right down to it. So now we're getting to our top four. So what is your top? top four. Yeah, what is your fourth favorite nightmare film? All right, so I'm gonna go with I'm gonna <laughs> go with part two here. Okay, okay. <laughs> there is, let me tell. Like when I rewatched this movie, there's so much. There's so you have surface level nightmare two. You have yeah. like undertones, just like a little bit of undertones, and then you have like deep undertones. Like there's so much going on in this movie yeah. that. It blows my mind, but all right. So it's surface level. I th think the vibe of the whole movie is really cool. I think it's kind of like gritty, kind of grindhousey, like really different from the original, but still keeping the essence and the evil of Freddy. That I felt like maybe there's some parts in the original Nightmare where Freddy, I felt he was really evil, man. He was really sadistic dark and grimy and i think two really kept that up you know it had a deep voice uh, i think the makeup was amazing uh, yeah. the more witch-like uh features on it and surface level uh the 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 soundtrack is completely different from the original uh, yeah. but i think it really hit some awesome notes too and i found myself being really kind of scared by the soundtrack this last watch it was really intense and it really got you know i had the had the whole the room up loud and it really got me you know it really got me in all the right moments too um but so if we keep on if we keep on going down the like levels you know i almost wish that there was two versions of this movie because there was a weird uh vibe i was getting the last watch so if you look at it through like jesse's point of view you got all the stuff going on with him but i was trying to look at it through uh was it was it lisa i was trying to look lisa, at it yes. through kind of her point of view and she, during most of the movie before let's say before the 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 pool scene it's almost like she's in love with this dude that's kind of like the dead zone she's trying to take him to these different places to see if he can pick up like any of these like telekinetic vibes and see what's going on with this Freddie yeah. Kramer character. You That's know, right. so I really dug that. I was like, man, if I could get like a double feature of watching Jesse's story and then Lisa's story, 
you know, kind of from both of their point of views. I was like, man, that's really cool. Yeah. Um, and then if you keep on going down another level, this movie is super important to the LGBTQ plus community and like going from when I was watching it when I was a kid, not picking up on like, I don't know if it's just me being naive, but not picking up on any of those, any of those uh, little, little, uh, little pieces, of, uh, little breadcrumbs in there. But I think it's, it's really cool to, to look at this male character from that point of view uh, and then basing a horror movie off of that. You know, there's so many different parts of people's lives and, you know, people's sexuality coming out. And, uh, you know, I think this movie is super important and way more, uh, there's way more to it than I, I've really thought at first. So Nightmare on Elm Street Part 2, Freddy's Revenge. Yeah. Yes. So, uh, uh, yes. Uh, okay. This is your number four. So my number four favorite film <laughs> in the series. Okay. Here's a piece of dialogue from the film. Okay. okay. Guess, can you guess what? Okay, here we go. All right. Um, all right here we go. That's okay. It's okay. It's all over. Yeah. Right. It's okay. So Nightmare on Elm Street Part 2, Freddy's Revenge, is my number four favorite film in the series as well. Uh, and I really appreciated your comments. You're multi-level, that's for sure. It's so multi-level, man. Yes, definitely. Um, from All the way from like the, the human faces on those dogs, yeah. which come out of nowhere, what's going on there, and the, the parakeet from hell. And yeah. you know, ah, oh, my cheek. Yeah, one of those damn turnbuckles. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, <laughs> clue, clue, clue. Yes. yes, you got it. Yes, what a great, what a great, great, uh, such an annoying dad performance. It's wonderful. One of the great dad performance. You know, there are so many great dad performances here. I think Nightmare yeah, yeah. Two has two of them. There's Jesse's yeah. dad. You know. Uh, uh, Clue uh, Gulliger, and also I don't know the I'm, I'm afraid I don't know the actor's name, but the actor who plays Lisa's dad at the pool party, yeah, he's got like the yeah, unbuttoned yeah. unbuttoned uh, pajama That's top with the shotgun. Yeah. Yeah, oh my god, it was amazing! <laughs> but um, uh, it reminds me too. Uh, I guess we'll talk. You know, the first nightmare film and and uh, uh, Glenn's dad, right? You know, yeah. I think you know what I think. I think he's like, kind of working. Uh, right? Is that yeah. that kind of? Oh my god! Uh, yeah, so that guy too. But uh, the dads here are great. But yeah, going back to Nightmare Two. Just a few things, right, to pick up on what you said. Freddy looks scary in this. Yeah. He is very scary. And I know throughout the years and watching all the documentaries that have been available, I think a lot of the uh, criticisms or, or one of the criticisms that has been voiced against this film, my understanding is that it takes Freddy into the real world and thus he becomes less scary. And I'm paraphrasing some of these arguments here. Yeah, yeah. In other words, right. he he goes into the... Freddy in a pool party is not scary. And I think that was mentioned in one of the documentaries here. Mm -hmm. I, with all due respect to those uh, people making those arguments, I would very respectfully disagree. Yeah, I think, in fact, in this film, at least it's portrayed in this film, the pool party scene is quite scary. It's he's just amazing. Yeah, a free for all. Like, there's the guy; he's running, and suddenly he his he gets stuck, and, and <laughs> oh, and he's just standing there with his <laughs> belly like, oh my god! And then there's like the people falling into the pool, and then like the guy they're trying to climb up, and the, they break the guy's neck or someone on the yeah. board. And then like there's the other kid, like, hey, hey, man, hey, you know. I want to help. You know, like, help yourself, right? like that. And then you get yeah, looks yeah. of Freddy Krueger's face. Very scary, very demonic. I think among the series, I think this is the, this is, I think I want to say perhaps this is the scariest that Freddy has looked. Either, it's either Agreed. this or maybe part one for me, but yeah. really, really scary, really demonic looking. Um, and uh, the I think there's just, uh, the music too. I think it's Christopher Young, so who will later score films like Hellraiser and Hellraiser Two. So it's 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 it has that, that yeah it has that kind of uh, and I, I think he mentions it in one of the documentaries in the Never uh, Never Sleep Again uh, documentary, the extras. He mentions how at the time he was scoring the music, he uh, Christopher Young was saying he was into um, whale songs, and so oh, you, can you can get a it. sense of like. Mm, like whale yeah. song and it's that's an interesting thing uh and uh, uh there and then right there's a uh the subtext uh which i think has now become one of the real fascinating aspects of the discussion of nightmare on elm street part two freddy's revenge 
mm-hmm. and aspects of of uh, 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 sort of the uh, the character and uh, uh, sort of sensibilities and sexuality and uh, sort of homosexuality and and uh, being gay, whether that is a, a text or subtext. Uh, that I think is really fascinating, and I think there's what it shows. I think it. it it, that the series is actually quite, quite uh, wide in scope and malleable, and it doesn't necessarily fall into what might be considered to be the quote unquote genre tropes of slasher films, mm-hmm. uh, and the final girl, so to speak, or scream queen, so yeah. to speak, etc. Which there's, I don't think there's anything inherently. Uh, I don't think there's. I mean, I I follow those. Uh, genre expectations and uh, other films uh, of the sort. But here, I think it's doing it in a way that is also uh, uh, giving us a different take on this type of of uh, uh, genre expectation in a, in an interesting manner. And yeah. it wasn't recog- I didn't sense it at the time when I was watching it a lot as a kid, but, you know, growing up and then realizing this is, I think, becoming a real fascinating aspect to it. And I think this reassessment or re- uh, uh, re-engagement on this level, I think, makes it uh, even more of a fascinating watch for me. And I, I really, yeah. I really uh, find it, uh, uh, it's very rewatchable in that aspect, more so than I had uh, first realized. And just going to like, like the scene with Grady and Schneider and, and, yeah. and these things, like you get to know these people, you get to know the characters and you get to know like, yeah, like, uh, uh, um, and uh, the the scene where uh, Freddie comes out of Jesse in Grady's bedroom, that like could be, yeah, yeah, American Werewolf in London. But I think it, yeah. it it could be one of the greatest special effects set pieces in all of Nightmare Films history. I think it's it it holds up so well. It yeah. is so well constructed, and it's very scary. And it 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 looks and it's gross and dirty and you get even get uh you know ferris bueller's dad in there it's just i mean it's just I know. <laughs> uh, you know you know you, you, you should, should grady you know what is what is the day of ferris bueller's day off that you know uh wrap a hot hot towel around your head or something yeah, like yeah. that so you should have said yeah. that to grady you wrap a hot towel around your head <laughs> <laughs> that could have that could help you son you know as he's being attacked and killed by everybody but uh, and Grady's just screaming his head off. Yeah. His dad's like, "Open the door! Like, yeah. like break the door down, please." Yeah, it's yeah. it's a very scary moment. Really, really yeah. scary. And you get the claws through the door, and the bl- it's really quite yeah. uh, quite disturbing. Um, yeah. And uh, uh, and then so I think then the relationship I think too that works really well is Jesse and Lisa. The devotion that Lisa has, as you mentioned, going to these places and seeing if Jesse senses anything, opening the 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 the, the little thing there and finding the the rat there, oh, and then yeah. uh, uh, does he sense something or not? And then this being the final place for the showdown, the pool party scene, I think is just it's I think it's really great and scary. And then the confrontation during that between Jesse and um, not Jesse between Freddie and Lisa. Uh, and the fight there, and the the chase, and the confrontation. I love you, Jesse. I love you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. oh, I love you, Lisa. Yeah, and that that becomes the crux of the of the uh, the, the the inner turmoil between Freddie and Jesse, which I think is is it, it's very believable by that point. You can really go along with it. Uh, it yeah. It's done very well. Yeah. And I don't know about you. One thing that I kind of liked in the Nightmare series is that I kind of have a pretty big fear of being falsely accused of, of like, in this case, murder. But I think that's kind of downplayed. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Like, yes, like yes, he, yes, that's right. he's he's in every situation where these people are getting murdered. And yes. I'm like, dude, what if they what if they catch him? He's really not doing it. That I think that's a huge part of this movie that people don't really talk about too. It's like, he's getting, you know, being falsely accused for all these deaths, you know? That's right. That's right. And then he miraculously seems to be off the hook by the end of the film. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what happened. Yeah. I just wrapped yeah. some bandages around and it should be fine. Yeah. Uh, I, I would love to have been in that police precinct when they're explaining what happened. Yeah. Uh, oh, that's what happened. Okay. If that's the case, then you're off the hook. Thank you. you go to school tomorrow. Bye-bye. Yeah. But, oh, we uh, found this gym teacher in the shower. He was brutally murdered. <laughs> and then we saw this kid on the side of the road naked. No connection. 
Yes. And I love the, you know, I, I love when Jesse comes back after Grady's death, he goes to Lisa's. Yeah. You know, you look at, yeah. yeah, I love that acting. Mark Patton is a, that's a yeah. great performance. That's a really it good really, performance. It really is. Yeah, yeah. 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 It makes me wish that Jesse and Lisa perhaps could have returned in some, they could have returned in, in maybe a later Nightmare on Elm Street. That would have been really cool to see. But oh well, oh well. Um, it, it, that it happens. That, and then uh, I'm like, what? But before we go, what is what is Freddy's revenge here? What what what's the revenge? Here? Do you know what that is? I, I don't know. It's like like revenge of the Jedi, and then then they had to change it. <laughs> yeah, but I thought I thought Freddy's revenge was actually the first film. The first film he's giving, he's getting his revenge out on all the parents by attacking yeah. the children. Here, I think he already had his, or he tried to get, he's trying to get his revenge on the revenge. I'm not sure. Should yeah. be Freddy's revenge, revenge on the revenge. But yeah. I never understood what his revenge was because I don't think Jesse ever did anything to him to begin with. But anyway, uh, yeah, oh, by the way, too, even... yeah. yeah, please go ahead. Oh, they weren't even in Elm Street, right? Yeah, they, they moved. They moved because, yeah, because you know it was a really good price that the dad got. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. uh, there's a scene too. I like the, the 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 sister and the getting the fingers from the cereal box. Oh yeah. And um, and the tomato and the cut, ah and then uh, what else? Uh, there's a scene where right the the famous scene where you know uh, Freddie confronts Jason. I'm not Jason, Jason, Jesse, Jesse, Freddie confronts uh, Jesse. Jason is, is not just Jason, but also the dog, Kincaid's dog, right? Who, uh, who Absolutely, urinates fire, yeah. right? In part four. Yeah. But, um, uh, but uh, 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 Jesse, uh, Freddie talks to Jesse there and he's, you know, he's like, we got special work to do here, you and me. And he has a famous line, you know, you got the body, I got the brain. And he pulls back his skin to reveal his brain. Yeah. And just ah, I don't know. I never thought found that to be scary because I because his skin doesn't look that different from his brain. So I, when he pulled it back, it wasn't looking. It was like <laughs> he pulls back his skin, which is already like brain like to begin with the burn scar. Yeah, yeah. And he pulls back and he reveals like it's just like oh yeah, it's just it looks like his skin. So I, I never thought that to be scary. It was it was interesting, but you know. But anyway, that's just me. That's a little thing. You know, it's like it's like what do you reveal? It's like you get a double double layer pizza so you reveal the yeah. first layer to reveal underneath what is it it's more pizza it's so you get like pizza, you know, yeah yeah so but anyway anyway that was my my take but anyway i mean I, i'm i'm a big fan of pizza so oh yeah me too yeah yes. but um, nightmare on Elm street part two freddy's revenge that is our number four pick you and i so we're down to the final three so i wonder how much overlap there will be here so what is your number three pick here your third favorite nightmare film my number three <clears throat> is uh, Wes Craven's <laughs> Okay, okay. All right. Very well think, done. Man, and I remember that this one was a childhood favorite of mine, too. I think this one is so before its time. Um, I think I will say about Nightmare 2, again, I know where we moved. I feel like that one feels very, very recent, too. I feel like kids can watch that today and still get a lot of out of it. Um, but just having Wes Craven back for a new nightmare, if really within the first couple minutes, it feels like a direct sequel. Like maybe all the other ones were null and void. And now you just kind of catch up with Heather and Nancy and John Saxon, you know? Yeah. Um, and I think it was just a, a stellar idea to have, you know, kind of like an inside look on how probably Heather's career was kind of at the time, you know, yeah. especially her with Robert England. Like, you know, they had Robert England signing all the autographs and she's kind of just like waiting on them. It just shows like the huge popularity of Freddie and what he had become. And, you know, he kind of just became more than the movies and uh, taking, taking these people's like true life story and kind of blending it into the script. Um, yeah. And it's almost almost kind of like Wes Craven's scream before scream, I feel like, mm. Mm. you know, kind of taking some of those horror tropes, like, and trying to figure out a way to turn it on his head. I know he didn't write scream, but, you know, kind of using that kind of same stuff into the formula of, uh, yeah. of New Nightmare. And I love the idea of, like, an ancient evil uh, choosing Freddy because it's so well known and then 
playing out the 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 real life events to in to continue its evil i think that's a super cool idea too but yeah. yeah everything everything about this and i like the little uh the cameos like tuesday night at the cemetery and uh the 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 different cameos in the beginning of the movie too um yeah i just love it man yeah yeah this is a, a great picture so number three so my number three pick okay so <laughs> can you guess here okay here's the here's the quote okay <clears throat> miss me yeah. or how about you know ever played skin the cat yeah so that's Wes Craven's new nightmare is also my number three favorite uh of the nightmare films and I think for the reasons that you described it, it, it I think I love the the meta aspect of it I love the fact that it, it's playing with the idea of of this uh, entertainment industry uh, and how the effects of this and whether it goes too far or not. And I like to the, the melding of that with this mythology about the entity and evil and how it has to find an embodiment in the Freddy yeah. form. And when the films end, then does it, you know, let loose this evil, which I think is a very interesting concept in linking it with, with uh, making behind the scenes, making of movies. It does have a scream like aspect to it in terms of mm -hmm. the meta meta feel. But I also like how new nightmare feels like it's, it is maybe more so than Scream, perhaps more about the filmmaking industry. It's yeah. more about the the Hollywood uh, culture uh, and and the, the the really big houses and the screenwriting process and and uh, uh, the various actors that appear and and they their friends. You know, John Saxon, Heather Langenkamp, they're 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 really good friends. They they talk in the park. You know, yeah, so, yeah. Uh, so so that's cool. I, I wish I I mean I wish. Yeah, I wish I had uh, right John Saxon. It would be cool to have been uh, been good enough friends with John Saxon to be able to know, to man. talk about things and ask for his advice at the park. That would have been really cool. Yeah. But uh, but anyway, yeah. So and I think it's very cleverly interweaving these things. Again, I think much like what I was mentioning before, I don't see the nightmare films for me as horror slasher films as much as fairy tales. And I think that is definitely Absolutely. the case for Wes Craven's Dune. That this is a, a fairy tale film, and which I think for me, when I first saw the film, I was disappointed in how it ended. It felt like a bit of a letdown, uh, anticlimactic ending, you know, with the and this kind of thing, the tongue. <laughs> but it, it, but the more I think about it, the more I realize it. it I think it's very fitting because it it has a type yeah. of vanquishing the evil, the 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 uh, the, the hero destroying the the monster uh yeah. and uh you know all the way down to like uh uh a, a, a burning furnace or or a burning stove or something like that you know the three yeah. little pay or what is that the, the wolves right uh yeah, and yeah. uh goldilocks and the three what is it is it goldilocks i forget what hansel, is it? And gretel. Uh, hansel and gretel thank you very much i'm yeah. going all over hansel and gretel so it has that i think fairy tale aspect too which i think is really great while also having a lot of chilling moments i think the makeup is great i think the uh yeah. the, the the babysitter what's her name julie i think her name is yeah. and the, yeah. the in the hospital i think is really scary uh yeah. and uh again I, I i like the i like the cameos and i like the Wes Craven playing Wes Craven or Heather Langenkamp playing Heather Langenkamp. And, and uh, I, I like their, their turns here, which uh, uh, a very clever, very creative uh, work indeed, I think. Yeah. yeah. It, and, and there's a lot of, it, when I was, no, I'm sorry, I have to. No, please. Oh, okay. so I was going to say there's a lot, when I was watching, there was a lot of comparisons I was doing to the remake that you know it's funny how Wes Craven could do he could pay his homage in in New Nightmare and see the people in the remake try to do the same thing so like you have the like the liquidy stairs at the end with Heather Langenkamp when she's trying to get Dylan it hits the stair thing she gets caught it's like muddy and stuff like that and also the skin the cat and how much better it worked in New Nightmare than it did in the remake, you know? Yeah. yeah just little things like that. And also the aspect of, um, while Heather's in the hospital and they're like, 
oh, this lady is absolutely crazy, you know? Yeah. And, and, and some points you kind of almost, you're like almost with that charge nurse. You're like, oh, this, la- this lady's putting this child in danger, you know? And then, you know, you just, she's like, oh, she just doesn't know the whole story. But I thought that was really the tension between the charge nurse and Heather Lane camp too was great. Yeah, I, I do. And, and that reminded me too a little bit of the, the, the way in which the, the main protagonist becomes suspect in terms of their, say, parenting and whether they might be putting their, their children in danger. And that has a sim- it's not quite the same, I understand, but it has a similar vibe into how, say, Alice was treated to a yep. certain degree in Nightmare 5. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, which, which adds to a sense of, of maybe paranoia and lack of trust mm-hmm. in the people around them. So, uh, yeah. which I thought was very effective indeed. It was, I think handled very well here. Um, so, uh, and I like that. What about the Freddy design or maybe the new Freddy or the, the entity, the evil design here? What do you think of the look, the makeup? I thought it was pretty cool. I think I loved it more when I was younger. And now I feel like, oh, okay, okay, maybe I wish they would have maybe hit him in shadow a little bit more. There's some, mm. the first time you see him, it's like broad daylight, you know. Um, but I still think overall, I still like it. Not my favorite, but still good. Mm. Mm. I, I think it's very, very clever and, and it's an interesting design choice. Uh, still very chilling to this day for me, but I like the, the, the hand look as well. Uh, yeah. But. Um, um, yes, oh, yeah. so and the, and the yeah. thumb claw too. Yeah, yeah. Yes, that's right. That's right. They add the thumb claw, right, which is different. Yeah. Yes. So, um, and they add like the bone, the skeletal look to it, and the exterior yeah. rather than the glove look, which is interesting. But, um, all right. So that's number three. So now we're at the final two. So, okay. what is your second favorite nightmare film? I think I might know what it is. If I'm going by this my one. list, I'm not sure. I don't know. This one might be an upset. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. So I got the original Nightmare on Elm Street. So this might be kind of an upset. There might be some people mad about this one. But I think this this movie, don't get me wrong, I love it. I feel like it's a kitchen sink movie. They threw everything. Yeah. Uh, I think the pacing is amazing. But I think it's maybe 75, 25 of what works and doesn't yeah. work you know there's some things like oh the, the rotating room with tina's death is is pure amazement but like a couple minutes before where he's got his arms stretching and he's like clawing the uh clawing the sides of the garages it looks a little you know especially today's day and age looks a little uh a little rough around the edges um but just the whole narrative of the movie um it's so classic it's so amazing and there's a point where it's right before uh uh nancy and glenn are on the bridge they're talking about you know the survival she's got the book and he's eating a cheeseburger or something i feel like from that point on it goes into pure as you were telling me with pure fairy tale after that i think there it, it does the same thing in new nightmare right when she's talking to john saxon and right, you know, as he starts calling her Nancy, you know, it kind of just takes this and then like all, you know, almost like Argento, like la- logic is, is yeah. full steam ahead, you yeah. know, because there's some things that don't, don't quite add up. Like oh, she, she brings Freddie out of the real world or into the real world and like she's yelling and there's nobody coming to help. Like clearly these cops can hear her. Um and then uh, just with her mom and st- yep. different stuff like that. Um, I really l- just love how it goes balls to the wall towards the end. It's, mm-hmm. it's a, it's a must see iconic horror movie. Yeah. Yeah. I, I agree. And uh, I think, um, I mean, we might as well let it. Yes. Yeah, so th- this is, uh, yeah, this will be, we, we're switched here. So yeah, yeah. in terms of the rank, but that's okay. I, I think it's number two here. I think it's very, uh, very worthy. And it is undeniably a classic. Mm-hmm. Undeniably, a cl- I think uh, the, the way that it opens up is uh, very uh, uh, 
it, it, it's very abrupt and very unsettling with the sheep and the thing and, and the jump scares, which I find to be among the most effective jump scares of any film that I've ever seen in my life. Uh, and so, uh, and just, uh, the, the soundtrack works so well. It feels like a, it feels, as you mentioned, like a grindhouse. It was an eighties film, but it doesn't feel like an eighties film in terms of its, most of it, you know, in some of the outdoor settings, it might feel that way, but it, the, the horror scenes and the, the grimy, uh, dream sequences feel like as grindhouse seventies films, which I really appreciate. Um, and the like, so, but, uh, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, I have some more to say about this, uh, but, uh, let me go then to my number two. So I guess we're going to have to, to go here as well. So, uh, my number two, uh, film is, uh, so can you guess from the, from the, uh, from the, the, the quote here? So let, let's see, what should I, what should I do here? Um, let's see. Um, uh, gosh, what's a good quote here from this film? Um, that's so see. many. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> in my dreams, I'm beautiful <laughs> and bad. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, Nightmare, yeah. Yes, Nightmare on Elm Street Part 3 Dream Warrior. So, and by the way, by the way, I, you know, I, I have everything here on the, the DV, the Blu ray set here, the, the, uh, the oft, I think, referred to Blu ray set. Which is great. You have the the separate DVD, which I, I admire very much. But uh, yeah, Nightmare Elm Street Three. I know you're you're gonna obviously talk about this a little bit later, but uh, uh, we have I think one of the great '80s films. Uh, this is like like uh, uh, Nightmare Elm Street meets The Breakfast Club or something like that. Yeah. It, 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 there is a a great almost John Hughes aesthetic. Uh, that's applied to the the Nightmare on Elm Street world, which I really admire. There's a group dynamic going on, which is great. The return of Heather Langenkamp as Nancy, which is great. It's great to see that gray hair, although I always think, why is it on that side of instead of this side? So that's one of the great, great, um, great mysteries. Uh, so, uh, but anyway, that's okay. That's okay. It's still there. Um, and then plus building the, 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 the uh, mythology even further. A lot of what we see in the mythology of Nightmare on Elm Street, it gets, it's from here, it's from this film, more so than the first film, I would say, mm -hmm. which is like, as you mentioned, uh, Amanda Kruger and, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the son of a hundred maniacs and um, Hypnosil and, and all these aspects and uh weston hills then becomes a big deal and you know especially as you mentioned uh freddy versus jason also nightmare and elm street park five uh you can get uh glimpses of the tower etc so this becomes uh, uh something of cementing uh new steps in the mythology which we hadn't seen before of course the 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 fundamentals were always there from the first film you know falling asleep being attacked in the dreams Freddie and the getting revenge on the 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 parents of those who killed him by uh, attacking the children, and then these being the last of the Elm Street children. Uh, so uh, this, I think, is a uh, it, it's cementing the legacy while building on the mythology very well, and the group dynamic I think is uh, really uh, very fun and engaging. And um, the characters I think are great. You know, uh, uh, Karen and Will, as well as. Uh, um, you know, Philip and, and, uh, you know, right. This is Philip, right. With the, yeah. the uh, which is really gross and shocking. Uh, I know, for, yeah. Uh, yeah. and then Jennifer with the famous TV death and then, yep. uh, and then Taryn and Will I mentioned, and then Joey Kincaid, uh, uh, Kristen and, and, uh, 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 and then of course, Nancy. So I, I think th it has a real great group of people, Plus the return of, of people like uh, John Saxon. And also the mythology is also built up too in terms of how to kill Freddy, g giving him his bones and his remains a, a proper uh, burial and the, and the, uh, the, the burial and the uh, uh, holy water, which I yeah. think is a really a very understandable, accessible way to understand how to kill Freddy, which I thought was really uh, quite, uh, quite remarkable. And, and, uh, uh, a lot of things too were very iconic at the time. Like I was a kid, right. And, and the playground with my other kids and, you know, we, yeah, it was like, uh, 
uh, right? Uh, you, uh, you, you, do you like my body, Joey? Yeah, I, I was, you know, and we, we get a we get a chuckle and, and laugh about that, and and uh, and Joey's like, <laughs> so like that, and and, uh, uh, and quoting this film, and and always what gets to me is the uh, is Will's death, right? I, I that always makes me so sad. It breaks me heart, you know. Oh, no. Sorry, kid. I, I don't believe he's so confident that he can get Freddy with his powers, yeah. and, and just he ran toward him, which is a huge mistake. <laughs> yeah, he got too overconfident, and just you know, yeah. oh, and then the, the look of shock and horror and disappointment. He's like, oh, I'm sorry, kid. I don't believe in fairy tales, and just oh. Yeah. Such a uh, oh my goodness, and Taryn too. I felt so bad for her as well, with the wonderful effect. It's really That's very great. disturbing, and then yeah. and then the the needles, which is such a scary thought, and then you see you see the effect of it, which is horrifying. Um, yeah. But um, uh, but as you say, the characters are are wonderful. Joey Kincaid, Kristen, that that becomes a really great great to trio and i was thinking about it too the, the way they treat nancy this is like this is like a a legacy character this would be like i don't know like uh what would Absolutely. it be today like like uh, uh this would be like the star wars sequel films but this you know how to treat the legacy again this is a really great yeah. way to to handle a character that we see i mean there's not that much yeah. um there's not that much uh, uh distance between the first film and the third film in terms of years no. right? they're just a, a couple no. years apart really yeah. but uh but in terms of the, the the scope of the film it feels like ages uh which i yeah. think is also a very uh, effective way to treat the whole universe of, of nightmare and Street. but the way they treat nancy uh and uh, and, and her father for that matter i think it, it's done really really well uh, really, really yeah. wonderful. So yes, that's that's my number two, uh, Nightmare Knows. And of course, the music is is great uh, uh, yeah. with the great, you know, it, it goes without saying, you know, Duck and, uh, uh, and oh, a med yeah. merging of, of the sort of of uh, 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 pop, uh, great heavy metal, and then uh, Nightmare on Elm Street. I think it, it's uh, really great. I mean, you've got the, this great song at the end of, uh, of Part One, but uh, I think Part Three yeah, is yeah, yeah. all time <laughs> classic. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, and I think just because of just because of the ending, it just that's what inches it out just a little bit for me. And, yeah. and 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 Dream Warriors, I don't think it has a bad effect in it. I don't think there's anything that really misses. Some people might yeah. not like stop motion, but other than that, I don't think there's a bad effect in the whole bunch. Yeah, I think so too. Well, what about when um, uh, the bones come back to life? Ah. Uh, <laughs> Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah. I mean, I, I like that. I mean, I like how Neil, Doctor Neil, right? Neil Gordon is trying to fight yeah. off the thing. And he's like, oh, you know, he and he's like, and he gets hit in the head. Oh, you know, he just. And, yeah, yeah. But I thought it was really good work. But uh, uh, I think they did the best they could. Um, yeah. Uh, but John Saxon's death in that—that that was pretty brutal. That is really. Oh my god. I like how he's like he has enough time to look. Like that. <laughs> that was, oh, that's so brutal. Um, but, uh, uh, and the ending to, what do you think of the ending? Uh, I always thought the ending with the little model house and the light comes on. I thought that meant that Freddie became miniaturized and you'd see like little Freddie walking around in part four, but oh well, you know, but I had, I remember I had debates about this with like other friends at, uh, you know, when I was a kid, like what happened at the end? That means that in part four, we're going to see Freddie and he's going to be all, he's going to be miniaturizing. He's going to like, he's going to attack people in like this micro world or something like that. And people are like, part yeah, four, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, gosh, were we wrong? Yeah. It didn't quite happen that way, but oh well. Oh yeah. So, That's the yeah, yeah, like Ant Man or something like that. But, yeah. Uh, uh, anyway, so no, I, I guess I, yeah, yeah. Well, let's let's go right to yes. Great. Yeah, please, please. So this is your number two, right? So so Dream Warriors. Oh, that's our number one. Num, num, yes, number one. Yeah, yes, this number. is your number one. So uh, the, please let, let's continue the conversation. What makes this the number one nightmare film for you? Then I think it's really you know just to to add to what you said just the the com the camaraderie between the, the characters i think that the ending is stellar it's almost like it's almost like he's dracula and they're killing him like with the holy water like that i think it's the the probably the best ending out of the whole series and again i'll say it's like you got one person that's in the dream world and one person in reality kind of like tag team and, and i really like that aesthetic um I think it's it's so quotable, the the pop culture 
phenomenon that this movie kind of spread. Um, yeah. And just, you know, it's, they're, they're the equal balance of being funny and being, and, and still being scary. Cause I remember being absolutely terrified when I was a kid, but there's super funny moments. Like when Nancy comes back to Weston Hills, she's talking to Lawrence Fishburne. She's like, oh, can I just see him once? And he's like, oh, they're in the TV room. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cuts, and it's just Kincaid just like <laughs> touching. You know, I'm like, that's, you can't fake how funny stuff like that is. Yeah. Um, and, and like you said, it's almost like the quintessential 80s fantasy horror movie. You know, yeah. like it's, 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 it's a little bit more than just like almost to call it a slasher would be kind of like demeaning towards it, you know, or kind of like you know uh almost like a slight to kind of what they were going for even though i think slasher movies are amazing you know i think it's mm -hmm. definitely more in the fantasy realm definitely definitely oh yeah and you're absolutely this is such a quotable film i uh gosh what is it um uh elaine where do you keep the bourbon yeah or, or uh uh Andale, yeah that, that those sorts of yeah, and, and don't, 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 yeah don't you know not to mention right Kristen's mother and you should listen to your mother you think I'm a man homie oh gosh that's really frightening or um uh gosh what else um um uh gosh uh <laughs> and, and I'm sorry I, I'm not trying to be vulgar myself but like Kruger pussy <laughs> <laughs> just like every other thing that Kincaid yeah. says is amazing. yeah Kincaid is is a, one of the great characters right um and yeah. uh even his little song to try to keep himself from staying awake yeah. you know it's like you know um right what does he say I ain't gonna dream no more no more right? yeah. all night long when he's in the when the quiet room I'm seeing this yeah, song. Yeah. I ain't gonna dream no more it's interesting too like uh let's see um uh gosh uh jennifer and 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 she wants to be an actress and watching uh, uh the decadent show and jaja gabor it was really fascinating to see jaja gabor in a in a neighbor in elm street film i don't know but mm -hmm. um uh you're absolutely this is uh, and and the whole thing too about uh, the the death of nancy that was such a shock to me uh yeah. it always hit me when when nancy goes um and uh uh right uh just the the unexpected way that she 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 fell for the the trick that Kruger did. it was so so what a cruel twist um yeah but uh uh and you feel it for all the characters when you do all, like yeah. every character that gets killed you're like oh damn man yeah you do it's very heavy very very heavy yeah. indeed so there's a weight to it which i think is great uh really adds to the the tension of the film uh very effective and and to the special effects i think are really well i think one of the things that really got to me the, the effect that really was effective was the one where nancy impales him with the spear or, or something mm, as he's yeah. got kincaid by the throat and he, he's yeah. revealed like uh he's pulling out a thing and he says yes you know and he licks the which is just a little touch of just gr grizzliness yeah. and then uh, he says you know the souls of children give me strength and he pulls that and you see the soul fate this is the first time we see the souls and how yeah. this is the idea of freddy uh, essentially consuming the souls of the people his victims and the faces so um uh which is a, a really uh, kind of gruesome twist uh so i thought the special effects as you mentioned i think were really great and tongues too i don't know about you but there's a lot of thing about tongues and uh, uh nightmare <laughs> yeah. this yeah. it's either this or new nightmare in terms of the best tongue sequence yeah, yeah. i'm not sure i don't know how you feel about the tongues oh um, yeah it's creepy man <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah creepy. yeah just like you know just joey's like all like happy and and, and <laughs> yeah, yeah, my tongue. yeah 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 gosh gosh yeah <laughs> His the best day of life, his life turns into the worst day of his life. Right? Yeah. So, uh, but anyway, yes, Nightmare Three is your number one choice. And that's a worthy, worthy choice. Uh, but uh, then I have to go back to a film that you mentioned uh, already, which mm -hmm. is a Nightmare on Elm Street. So you know, uh, let me just finish out the the thing here. So a quote from Nightmare on Elm Street. There are so many. I think the one that that um, uh, is for me the probably the most iconic quote. 
my friends always talked about it when we were talking about, oh, this is such a cool film. Remember that scene when Nancy's in the hall and she runs into that uh, that other girl and uh, she says, you know, hey, Nancy, no running in the hallway. That quote, for whatever reason, was like the biggest thing among me and my friends when we talk about this film. It's like, that was amazing. And that was an example of just how much effect this film had on me and my group of friends and my generation uh, watching this film, just loving this film. Again, I was born in 79, so this was, I would have been five, six, seven when we were talking about this film or watching this film. So it's it has a very intense impact. And uh, it's quirky, it's weird. Like, um, I, I always think, uh, even lines now like uh, uh, Johnny Depp, you know, uh, hey, kitty, kitty, chow, chow, chow. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, and yeah. It's, woo! Right, you know, and uh, things like uh, that's a lot of blood for from Glenn's bed. I don't think I think that's too much. I think if that's yeah. meant to be the amount of blood that the human like body, I don't. People. Yeah, like I don't think that. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a lot. But uh, uh, but like, uh, and how Glenn is so like I don't know about you, but if I were if I if I were about to watch Miss Nude Universe on TV. I'm not going to tell my, I'm, I'm too embarrassed. I'm not going to tell my mom, Hey, I'm going to watch Miss nude universe tonight, no, but she's no, very no, open no. about that. So he's very, very kind of, you know, very open dialogue among his fans. Really great. I, I think, but, uh, and then the whole thing with Rod and Tina, uh, and it's a very graphic language that I didn't understand. Um, at, uh, uh, you know, like, like there, there's four letters in my name or how, you know, you know, yeah. How how can there be enough room on your joint for four? Lines? I had no idea what this yeah. meant until much know, later. Yeah. Oh, I see. That's what it meant. And oh, like the bit, yeah. yeah. And the bit where like they're like they're screaming and moaning, moaning, having sex. And I like like I was like, what what? When I was like, little, what's going on? What what are, are they, they like fighting? Yeah. And I thought, oh, much later, I realized. Oh, I see. They're, oh, they're having yeah. a lot of. They're having um. So that so they're 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 having a makeup session because they fought yeah. earlier in the day. Uh, yeah. So, uh, but uh, uh, so little things just just uh, were very uh, unknown to me and unaware to me. Uh, but just growing up with the film became more and more of a kind of a thing for me. And then just uh, uh, other things too, like uh, the the Ronnie Blakely performance as as the mom, Marge, Donald, uh, Lieutenant Thompson, right? John Saxon, of course. What a great kind of tense relationship i didn't realize until later that they were they were meant to be separated or divorced i'm not sure but i, I never thought of that yet yeah. Yeah. yeah but uh, that explains why you never see them necessarily together within the household yeah. uh and they seem to be separate or distant even when they talk to each other they seem to be talking like they haven't seen each other in a while so yeah. uh and so and then ronnie blakely's performance as the as the mother who has uh, some issues with alcoholism which very obviously yeah. she herself acknowledges uh and yeah. the final final twist with her the thing in the, the through the doorway there yeah. uh really quite frightening and um uh, and so, and then even things too, like you mentioned the, the special effects, they look kind of hokey in some places. I think that works to the film's effect, actually. It works to its yeah, strength. Yeah. It it just has this weird, oozy, slimy, grimy quality to it. Even like those effects where you see the, 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 uh, the stretched out arms. To be perfectly honest, I yeah. think the biggest weakness for me is not the stretched out arms, but the close up of the claw hand. And you actually see that his hand is not burnt. That's what I found to be, oh, really? you know, yeah, 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 yeah. His 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 claw hand, you, you, it's always not burnt, which I always thought was, it's if he's Weird. burned alive, yeah, everything should be burned. But oh, well, maybe his glove yeah. covered his. You know, but anyway, um, but uh, uh, and just Tina's death was very gruesome and very bloody mm -hmm. and and disturbing. And I think back to how you compare it to the anal the analogous scene in the remake, and just doesn't compare. It doesn't compare in terms of of uh, disgusting factor and real disturbing uh, qualities about it. Uh, and uh, even, even things like, uh, uh, like uh, uh, Rod and, and Tina and Rod and Nancy, Glenn and Nancy, um, the booby traps, which I thought was very, it was, very, it was like home alone quality. It would have been great to see oh, yeah. Macaulay Culkin in a nightmare on the street <laughs> to see what he would have done. 
you know, yeah. uh, angels just, uh, with filthiest souls. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, but uh, the, and the musical score is great. Even the final song. You know, we were talking about this offline. You know, uh, oh, it's a nightmare. <laughs> oh, it's a nightmare. <laughs> it's a dream. Oh, it's a nightmare. Yeah, that's it's a banger. Uh, it's great, great. Yeah, uh, just uh, everything about it just screams '80s. It screams grindhouse films. It feels like a '70s film made in the '80s. Uh, which I think is yeah. right up the wheelhouse for um, many people, my generation and future generations. I think it, it's it's a bona fide classic for many reasons. And yes, I love how it twists and turns. At the end, you're not quite sure if it's a it's it's a dream kind of already. Uh, yeah. So uh, you think it's in a reality, but it's, so it's this is very much like again. It would have been interesting to see what if Christopher Nolan for his next film decides to make a nightmare in Elm Street film. Everything is just out of whack, out of sync. But it was already done already in, in terms of Wes Craven and, and what it is he has to offer and also the backing of, of, uh, of New Line Cinema and the like. I mean, a lot of stories are starting here. Uh, and a lot of uh, great, I think, uh, artistic and creative work is happening in this film. Uh, to uh, incredible effect uh, um, and very simple things like the body bag, Tina in the body bag. It's creepy, yeah. creepy as heck. Um, and oh, I was supposed to say one thing too. There's a great quote early in the film. I think one of the students stands up in the class and reads Shakespeare. Uh, I think he starts to read from Julius Caesar, but then when Nancy gets into the dream, he starts to quote Hamlet, right? Oh God, I remember about it in a nutshell and count myself a king of infinite space were it not that I had bad dreams. So uh, I always remember when I, later in my English class, you know, in high school, when we studied Hamlet, and that quote came up. I always think of Nightmare on Elm Street. I think that's Hammer. I hope I'm not getting my Shakespeare quotes incorrect. But in any event, uh, no, I think yes. you're right. I think you're right. Okay. So it's uh, it. So uh, when I think of Shakespeare, I always think of Nightmare on Elm Street and Star Trek. But uh, uh, yeah, oh, really? that, those Star are. Trek too. Yeah, those are those are. Uh, this is just my way to say this is one heck of a film. Uh, it's such an important film for me growing up. Nightmare on Elm Street. Yeah, and I also love there's. So I actually timed it. I had to look at the timer when I was watching it. Like for a movie to go in and kind of set the rules of the whole film in the first, I think I timed, it was like the first four minutes. So it was like Tina waking up and then you could see the, the slash marks in her dress. Yeah. I'm like, oh, sets it up. It's like, oh, if you get hit in the dream, it's for real. Like, yeah. and I thought that, I think they use that quite a few more times in the, the rest of the series just kind of like earlier in the movie, just telling you what the rules are. But I was like, man, that's so quick for yeah. a film to just right off the jump tell you that. Yeah, very economical. And I love the mother's reaction. Like, you know, you just gotta gotta cut your fingernails or just yeah. stop that kind of dream. One or the other, right? I'm like, oh yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah, that's gonna solve her fingernails are the problem. Okay. Yeah. All right, but anyway, yeah. So um uh uh definitely it, it's very economical. Incredible academic and tells its story uh, very, very quickly and very understandably. You're absolutely right. Absolutely right. Uh, so, um, are there any other thoughts or any comments about um, uh, this or or Nightmare Three or any other films? I would I would love to to ask you how you think it fits with the other, let's say, like the Halloween's or the night the uh, Halloween's or the Fridays. Uh, series do you think do you have a particular horror series that you go to as opposed to others like would is this your go-to horror franchise or would you say no oh that's a good question i think for me if i had to choose my favorite horror franchise it would probably be nightmare on elm street i agree yeah i would say yeah. the same yeah i mean I, I like the other franchise let's say that the, the top let's call them the the halloween friday the 13th and nightmare if I had to choose among those three, it would be Nightmare on Elm Street, uh, simply because that's the one I think I've seen the most yeah, growing me up. Too. Yeah. yeah, not to take anything away from the other franchise or other films, but just this is the one that I've seen the most. Um, so, which could explain why I have a maybe a, a slight uh, hesitancy when I watch the remake because I feel like it it doesn't quite. It doesn't feel like the, the vibe that I get when I watch the earlier films because I've just seen them so many times. So it's probably just an, um, an insurmountable um, disadvantage that that remake has, perhaps. Yeah. Um, and so that makes me feel 
like I'm I'm more open to the Friday the Thirteenth remake than I am to the Nightmare on Elm Street remake. Maybe because of that same. reason. Yeah. Yeah. Same. Yeah. Yeah. So it's the same for you. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. But nothing against, especially because I love the Friday films as well. You know, uh, I I think Jason Goes to Hell is kind of my the least favorite out of all of them. Like even like the nightmares and the 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 uh, the Halloweens too. But yeah, if they, if Nightmare on Elm Street's always usually been my go-to. Yeah, that is uh, that's uh, kind of it's just iconic, and I love to just it seems to be playing with cinema and, and just just stretching the rules of cinema as well, which I think also it's uh, it's quite fascinating. Um, but uh, I, I wanted also, as we discussed earlier, maybe we can pivot a little bit and just stay with the nightmare films, but just uh, just bring it out a little bit more generally. And I just wanted to ask you just some very general questions about okay. this. Um, and then so what, who are some of your favorite characters from out throughout the entire series? Can you name a, a few favorites for you? If you had to pick like your absolute favorites and these can be uh, anyone, you know, heroes, villains, uh, m- uh, secondary characters, minor characters, uh, the yeah. like, who are, yeah. Who are some of your favorite characters here? Definitely Kincaid. Just he's got to be my favorite character out of the whole series. You know, I think every bit of dialogue that comes out of his mouth is hilarious. And uh, I also really like Lawrence Fishburne. I would, I really wish he would have got uh, a little bit more in Nightmare Three, but you know, it can't be a four-hour-long movie. You know. Yeah, yeah, those are great choices. And what about your least favorite characters, or the characters that kind of don't quite do it for you? Um. There was a couple in. Uh, I don't. I, I didn't love Dylan in New Nightmare this time around. I, uh, he's not. He's oh, not the the, the son, the the boy. The son, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I felt. Okay. I felt. I felt like it was a little much for me this time around. Okay. But it's definitely not. I don't know if you've seen the movie The Baba Duke. It's not like that. It's not even on that level. But okay. that one's notorious for like child actor like being maybe the one of the gets the most heat in cinema you know okay okay but yeah yeah it was particular this time around you know uh and the the knockoff jason muse and freddie versus jason <laughs> is it Freddy, you know what I'm, saying? I'm like dude yeah, yeah. Like jason muse you know? yeah 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 i was inter- yeah it was, it was just yeah not quite the, it's it's you know what they're going for not quite the yeah yeah, yeah i i love that yeah yeah, but uh, okay. Uh, and then, uh, what about some of your favorite uh, sequences? Uh, they can they can be like the 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 kill sequences or just dream sequences. What are some of your favorite sequences from any of the films? I love in the first time that I saw Nightmare Four, where it loops. It yeah, got, got me yeah. the first time. I'm like, I'm like, there's something wrong with this tape or. And then it just kept on going. I was like, "Oh, it's looping." There, he, you know, the caught in that, uh, caught in that dream loop. Uh, yeah. And then a lot of the kills from, like Dan's unedited kill from nine from Nightmare Five, is I think it's Chef's Kiss, man. Same thing mm-hmm. with uh, in uh, Freddy's Dead. I think uh, Carlos is Carlos. Chef's Kiss. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and then what about your uh, WTF moments? Like, what what is going on here? Type of moment. They don't have to be necessarily negative takes, but just, 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 yeah. What WTF moments for you in the Nightmare series? Definitely in Freddy versus Jason, the like caterpillar Freddy, you know, okay. with the bong. I was, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was like, yeah. okay, all right, yeah. all right. Uh, and let's, let's see, what's um, and the the. the the dogs with the faces from Nightmare Two yeah. definitely a little off-putting. Maybe the rat from Nightmare Two, a little oh, yeah. off-putting, yeah. a little evil. Yeah, <laughs> those are really quirky choices, uh, quirky moments. Yeah. yeah, so great choices. Uh, and then let's see, what is your uh, what is your um, favorite Freddy makeup? Mm, I have to go probably part, part two. Part two. Oh, interesting. Yeah, probably part two. Interesting. Why part two? Just something about the the, the contacts and just the yeah, he just looks evil, man. He's yeah. just super evil. I think the 
the more it went on, especially um, to like part four and part five, it got a little, you know, got it, it felt a little bit more latexy, or, or you could tell. Uh, but just part two for me, man. Yeah. And what about, let's see, uh, what about your favorite musical moment from the films? Do the fat boys, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, from part five. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, yeah. That was great. Yeah. That was great. Yeah. Yeah. I probably what watched a- that video like 15 times, like in the span of this week. I like, think it was so amazing. Yeah. That is a, uh, what a great, what a great time to be alive. I'm, I'm telling yeah. you. Oh, that's because a great it's moment. like, it's early hip hop too. So yeah. it's like, it's early hip hop still kind of like rough around the edges too. Yeah. And just like for them trying as hard as they can to try to get some MTV, you know, try to recapture that docking thing. Um, it's just amazing. Yeah. And at the very end, I don't know when the last time you watched that video was being mind was like two hours ago like the very last frame is the dude eating a donut and, yeah, yeah. and it like yeah. freeze frames on it it's yeah. just a pure amazing yeah. there are so yeah that that's a great example just what this is such a great rich such a weird world the nightmare yeah. it's universe it's so weird like yeah. uh, the that video is is just gold and i i, I forgot to mention it too but the watch that Nancy wears in the first film, the one that the talking watch, that yeah. is really revolutionary. You never had a watch. I think I don't think so. There was never a watch like that in the 80s. So it was it was like, you know, oh, yeah. final, final countdown, 10, 9, 8, seven. Yeah. That that was such a I wouldn't have wanted a watch like that because I and I was so disappointed when I realized that they don't make those types of watches. That's mm. just in the movies. So uh, I guess it's very different now. It's, it's a, maybe an early, early precursor of an of an Apple Watch or something. I know, yeah. <laughs> but, but uh, oh gosh. And then, okay, so what about this? Uh, now we're in the phase of, um, uh, let's see, what would you like to see uh, in terms of a, uh, what would you like to see uh, a physical media company do with the nightmare film? What, what would you like to see? Cause at the moment, notoriously, we're not seeing a lot at the moment. So what would you like to see in terms of uh, the treatment of nightmare films in uh, physical media? Man, hope, the exact same thing that they did with the Friday set, but maybe, maybe just 4k, you know, I think they, I think screen factory did an amazing job with all the Halloweens and, the Friday the 13th, I think they'll just knock it out of the park. But I do hear that, like, be, I think it's the 40th anniversary this year, the original. I heard that a, a 4K of at least the originals coming out this year. Really? Yeah, yeah. Really? I think it's around Halloween time. But that might be hyperbole, but that's, you know, I've been seeing it a lot lately. Wow. Gosh. That would be really fascinating to see these films come back. I, if there's a box set, I don't know if they, they have the opportunity to include Freddy's Nightmares, the entire Freddy's official release of Freddy's yeah. Nightmares. Because talk about talk about a a real oddball all over the place series. That is, we yeah. didn't talk about it that much, but uh, maybe let me just then ask you just very quickly. Um, yeah. What what is what's what about the Freddy's uh, Freddy's Nightmares? How do you feel about Freddy's Nightmares? The, the TV series. So I actually, I've, I, I really like it because it was a weird time in the, so probably like 2008, 2009, the States, we had a channel called Chiller and yeah. they used to rerun some of the Freddy's nightmares. Like, so I just remember being able to catch them on TV. And of course you would have like that weird, like intermission, like, Oh, what's Freddie going to do next after this commercial, <laughs> you know? So yeah. there was like that inherent like kind of cheesiness attached to it, yeah. Um, but yeah, I think it I think it stands up there. There's nothing like having kind of like a Tales from the Crypt episode with the Freddy being the crypt keeper, you know? Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's very clever, and uh, I think at the very least, I think I'm not the only one who's voicing this, but the 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 early episode was it No More Mr. Nice Guy. I yeah, think yeah. it's it's I think that's really important in terms of a continuation of the Freddy universe, um, and it made me so scared to yeah, go to I the think dentist. Toby did that yeah. too, right? Something yeah, the like dentist. Yeah, and the dentist scene. Yeah, right. That's the yeah. right with the with the. Te- I love the bit where you see Freddy like shot. He's do as the teeth are falling and like a piece of teeth 
uh, flies into his mouth, he's kind of, ah! <laughs> ah! I like that. Right? You remember that bit, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, gosh, amazing. But uh, um, what a what a great series uh, just all over the place. I don't know if it's for everyone. Um, and I know it has its detractors. Perhaps yeah. uh, understandably so, but it would be great if they could include the Freddy's Nightmares uh, in maybe a bonus disc or two discs or whatever, three discs or something. Yeah. If they ever to if they were ever to release a box set, a uh, um, uh, a box set to end all box sets in terms of nightmare films, that would be yeah. ideal. Um, and so, and then also, I want to say, what a, what would you like to see? How would you like to see, uh, or what would you like to see, or who would you like to see in your ideal uh, next nightmare movie? What kind of story would you like them to try to tackle? Were they ever to make a new nightmare film? What would you like to see? Who would you like to see in it? Uh, how would you like to see Freddie portrayed? What What would be some of your dream scenarios? Were they ever to make another nightmare movie? Man, it's so hard because like, I always think about how much I enjoyed it. Chapter one, the fr- you know, I think they mm. really nailed the kind of like, I think, and I, I was going to say stand by me, but that's, you know, I guess it's the, the Stephen King formula, kind of how yeah. kids grow up. You know, I think that would be a really cool idea set in the nightmare series, you know, kind of being like how they set up it. Um, but I'm a kind of firm believer in no names for the kids, you know, uh, and then maybe do what's his name? Doug Jones. Do you know who Doug Jones is? The guy that played uh, the, the I think he's like the thin man in Pan's Labyrinth. He's in like everything. If you look okay. him up on IMDb, okay. um, he's he's played everything. I think he played in uh, The Shape of Water. I think he played the creature yeah. in The Shape of Water. Uh, but I think he would be, he's kind of like a skinny, kind of more like lanky Freddy. I think that would be pretty cool if you can get a cool like art style behind it. Uh, but yeah, more like, you know, show the kids struggles and then, oh, they kind of have this Freddy thing going on too. Yeah. All, that's an interesting take, I think, to sort of the, insta, like, like uh, it, Stephen King's it. Yeah. That would be, and because uh, it has a lot of parallels, I think, in terms of it really does. Story. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I never thought about it before, but you're absolutely right. The group of, of the teenagers and the friends, mm. uh, and the fears that are the yeah. basis of, of uh, their being they're, uh, they're being attacked by this demon monster. You're absolutely right. Yeah. Um, it would be great to see Robert England, though. I'm, I'm, I think Robert oh, England yeah. is, is just uh, one of the great, great actors. Um, his physicality, his performance, his walk, his, his, yeah. just his, his mannerisms, uh, he just gets everything right. Uh, yeah. and, uh, uh, he just, I, I, I don't know if it's, it's very hard to replace Robert England. Uh, I don't know if it's possible, but that's the thing is it, it might not be possible. It yeah. really might not be. Yeah. In which case they should do maybe bring Robert England back if he were ever, uh, if he wanted to do it. Uh, I think it'd be, there's so much possibility. I'm not sure. It doesn't have to be a remake. Uh, it doesn't have to go back to the, to the beginning, but it, it might be, I, like, it would be great to see, as I mentioned before, it would be great to see some of the characters that, have served, like Alice meets Jesse or something like that. Yeah. Or, um, just uh, seeing the return of these characters that we know are still, at least as far as we know, are still alive somewhere out there, um, and uh, uh, seeing what they can do. I don't know. I, I, there seems to be a lot that can be done, but who knows? Maybe, maybe this is it. But uh, uh, and especially since the remake didn't quite do it for both for either of us, I think maybe. Yeah. It, it's probably uh, maybe a good thing that it's it's ending or it, it's not moving forward with any new films like it is. But who knows? I mean, we can always fall back on. We can always revisit these films that we've watched before, yeah. which I think are real classics. But uh, interesting. So, uh, any final words or any parting comments? Uh, anything you want to say about this series, Nightmare Films? Uh, anything at all? Because I think this has been a really great conversation, Tanner. Uh, but anything you, you want to say before we end it, I don't want to, I want to leave it uh, to you to, to say anything that, uh, you, you want to be sure that's said that you wanted to say. Hmm. I think maybe just a plea 
for anybody that hasn't like if if it's on their kind of like bucket list movie watches just to you know either i don't think that this series is like necessarily streaming on anything i think you'll have to rent it you might have to they're like maybe three or four bucks a pop but if you can go to a second hand shop get this dvd set you know for 15 bucks or yep. go to your walmart you know and yep. just you know crack it open start start with the first one you know see where it goes but i plead i plead you to watch them all you know and i don't think it'll be a waste of your time i think that you will fully enjoy yourself or at least have a couple laughs because it's amazing yeah, I, I agree. I think it would be, uh, it is one of the great horror films, but as I think we've tried to suggest, or maybe uh, we we see it as like a fairy tale. Yeah. And we see it also as uh, just using the dream universe in in this way that I think is, is very clever, absolutely clever. Um, and so uh, I, I echo your sentiment wholeheartedly i think it, it are definitely worth checking out they're not for everyone they're very intense they're very gruesome in places of course mind you but they're the concepts there are are just uh uh they're they're, they're kind of out of sight just yeah, oh, yeah. unbelievable concepts uh so uh definitely worth it so, real classics here i agree um so thank you tanner that was a lot of fun thank you that was thank great um so uh, just again, uh, please, uh, for those who uh, maybe are seeing you for the first time, Tanner, where can people find you? Uh, uh, I have a YouTube channel. It's kind of dormant right now. It's called The Horrible Show. Uh, but you can find me on Instagram, too. Uh, I've been kind of writing an album. My oldest brother plays uh, guitar and music and stuff like that. So I kind of switch off. Sometimes I'll do YouTube channel. Sometimes I'll do some music stuff. But uh, sure to have new episodes soon. You are a renaissance artist extraordinaire. I, I wouldn't say all that. <laughs> That's wonderful. So I, I you know I know you are a musician and as 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 well as this wonderful cinema enthusiast. So and also a very, very, very good friend. So uh, I want to say thank you very much for this. We, we should do another. What would be the what should we the next series that we do? I, I and we've done Halloween. Should we do Friday? I don't know. Friday. I'm, there's so many good ones like Friday. There's, I don't the Evil Dead series. I don't think oh, okay. has any any misses. Yeah. Really, like the, the quality. Did you hear they're gonna make another one? They're they're gonna do another like offshoot Evil Dead. Oh really? So, okay. Yeah, I'm kind of kind of excited with that. I'm, I love the Alien films. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So the, we should. Opportunities are out there. Okay, maybe if. Maybe we might do the Friday the Thirteenth series, though. That might be the next place to go. I don't know, or that, or what's another one that has kind of a lot, a lot of them in there, in in the in this Hellraiser, maybe. Yeah, Hellraiser. Definitely. Although I must admit, the Hellraiser, when you get to the later ones, it kind of gets a little bit uh, for me. But uh, yeah. um, uh, but uh, yeah, it might be something. We'll we'll talk offline. We'll have to yeah. do this again. I, I can't wait. But I enjoyed the Halloween one I, uh, very much, and I enjoyed today very thank much, so Tanner. So, but uh, we'll see each other uh, again very soon. But anyway, my dear friends, thank you so much, uh, and uh, we will we will uh, you know see you in your dreams. Yeah. Don't fall asleep. Yes. <laughs> Don't fall asleep. Yeah. Uh, what are some other great quotes? Just end with some quotes here. Anything you want. This is your last chance. Some great, uh, any quote. Where's the bourbon? <laughs> <laughs> or, um, uh, uh, what is it? Um, uh, gosh, mind over. What, what does he say? What does he say to Dan? Alice say, you know, what does he say? You are one big something hunk. I forget what he says. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, or hello, babe. Babe. Uh, yeah. <laughs> or um uh oh gosh um, nice hearing from your carlos <laughs> yeah. or things like that uh, or uh, jesse <gasps> <laughs> yeah yeah uh what's uh the i am eternal yeah That's a great one. yeah i like that yeah. uh, and, uh, uh 
Oh gosh! Welcome to Wonderland, <laughs> Alice. Sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Or that, that goalie was pissed off about something, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. All right. Oh, this is great. This is great. So anyway, my dear friend, thank you so much. Uh, and uh, we'll talk again very soon. Thank you, man. Thank you.